Tim. <laughs> I, Hello. I really want I really Hello. want you to be a part of tonight's show, but it's me. something inside <laughs> me says tonight, what folks. It's just it's on. just gonna be double Danas. Nobody wants to see twice of you. That's double D's for people in your side of the room. Oh, man. Let me fix D's, this. There you go. Yeah. You can come back and play, folks. Welcome What's back. Up? 2022, 2022, new year, That's new me. <laughs> when we started this, I think it was 2017. Yeah, it's been a, been a bit. Five, not technically five years, but it has been, been the time. The time. The time 2022, right? season four, episode three. It has been a long break. And see, yeah. what we did here is we added something for you guys because... Mm. People didn't know whether to be on YouTube or Facebook because they couldn't join the comments yeah. together. So we just thought, hey, let's just throw them up there. You guys get to see your comments. You get to see the people from YouTube. You get to see the people from Facebook. And that's pretty cool to me. So uh, let us know where you're from, what you're drinking. Let us know about Christmas. Did you get Omicron? Because if you didn't, you're probably one of the only <laughs> people. The only people out there. The only people who <laughs> seemed to dodge it. So, yeah, I'm Dana Lattery, and that's Tim Hepworth. Tim Hepworth. And we're with Fly Fishing Board for Outfitters, and this is Thursday Night Live Fly Time. So, if you are brand new, uh, give us a signal that signals us to let us know that you're new. Yeah, we want to know you found us obviously a little bit about yourselves and if you if you'll know right away you'll fit in fit in no problem with this group uh, it's nice if you're here though to, to let us know you're here so if, if you're just watching and you don't comment although we can see numbers and know there's lots of people here we don't really get to know you and we want to know everybody that's here and following along and, and sharing so drop us some comments yes cam says he had the lurgy, the lurgy. Uh, scott from littleton colorado barry Happy New Year's, TNL Happy New friends, Year. family, and everybody else. Clint's joining in from the YouTubes. Caitlin is over on YouTube. Everybody Coke. says my mic's off again. They really don't like my mic, do they? Oh, David Blackman, he's not new here. <laughs> You're not new. I Dave. could turn your mic up super loud, and Whoa. then it's just super loud. And all you hear is me. And then Let all us know we if hear. That's better, Cam. Cam's on it. He's always on it. Well. In my ears, you sound wonderful. Yeah. You see, there's a difference in the two setups of microphones, and we tried to rectify this earlier, but Tim... Let me show you how he tried to rectify this. So Yeah, I got him a Christmas present, okay? Yeah. I got him a headset. <laughs> trying to get his mic a little closer to his face. Now, tell me that this is... Whoa, I don't even... Can you put this thing on? Yeah. Yeah, we could, so... We could plug it in and the folks could tell us whether they like it better. <laughs> well, whether they do or not, I know what I feel. <laughs> tell us. You got 30 seconds to sell a product. <laughs> to sell a product. But wait. But wait. There's more. There's more. For just three ninety nine. For just three easy payments of twenty nine ninety nine. You can get what? <clears throat> I don't know. You put me on the spot. I don't know what to <laughs> See, sell. See, <laughs> you did. You did. <laughs> I wasn't ready. You, you should didn't sell. Give me time. You should. See, Look. Unreal. David loves it. He said, "That's you. That's so you. That's so me." The countryman will come in, oh, and man. It's funny that Blake asks about the countryman because, folks, if anyone else in here is as addicted as addicted, addictive, a dick, if there's yeah. any other dicks in here <laughs> to the show called Yellowstone, we have a little cool thing happening next Thursday because. I look at the flies for next week, and we got what we call the stone flopper. Mm. Essentially, it's a yellow golden stone, so a yellow stone flopper. flopper. And now, funny that Blake asked where the country is. I come up with the yellow stone flopper. Tim, why don't you tell us what's happening <laughs> next Thursday? Well, next Thursday, folks, you have your next opportunity to dress up along with me and Dana. We are going to do a Yellowstone theme night, so we want to see your best Western attire. So that means come all out. We want you to, 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 to I don't even know what you call this stuff. This is new to me, but I'm sure there should be like a leather bow tie or something in there. But Wait, that's that's different. That's Chippendale night. No, 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 no. <laughs> Wear a cowboy hat and look good. But we got to pick our characters. I yeah. definitely think that 
So oh. let us know in the comments as we're dressing up as Yellowstone. Who should I dress up as, and who should Tim dress up with as Beth? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I get to drink a lot. I guess that's good. <clears throat> so yeah, just let us know in the comments because we're gonna have prizes next week. We have prizes every week, and if you haven't downloaded a bingo card, I highly suggest that. We'll get into that right away because every single Thursday, you can join in, watch the show. It is completely free mm -hmm. because our sponsors kick some royal butt. Yeah. There's tons and tons and tons and sponsors and friends and family of TNL, such as Blake, that have donated and given us a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. To give away to you guys each and every Even episode. Even Janine, Tim is obviously Beth. I what, is thanks, she, what are you talking thanks, about? Thanks, Beth Hepworth. Oh, I'm not uh, apparently, Jim James William Crawford stayed up past his bedtime just to tell me that I should be <laughs> Beth. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Uh, purple hair, Teeter. Who's Teeter? Teeter? Oh, Teeter. She's the, isn't she the oh, chick? Oh, she's the girl. She's sloppy, yeah. too. Oh, Where's yeah. Rip? Beth for Tim Hepworth. <laughs> Guys, Whoa. this is not happening. Come no up with fighting better. in the bunkhouse. Oh, come on. It could be the situation. Fighting in the bunkhouse. Uh, so, yeah, new bingo cards are out, folks. And it's funny you say that because what we're going to do is we're going to pop over to a little screen here called What is Thursday Night Live? Mm. How do you get yourself a bingo card? That so, Tim, why don't you tell everyone what Thursday Night Live is? Thursday Night Live, folks. In a brief synopsis, Thursday Night Live is simply... Every Thursday night, we come together. We bring this awesome group of people um, together to tie a couple flies. But the fly tying is just in the title. It's there as a small part of us. This is more about fellowship, um, spending time together, encouraging each other. Um, it started in a way that <clears throat> we just wanted to gather people. And physically, in a person, we were able to do that for a while. As COVID has kind of changed that, we, we also pivoted a little bit. Um, and now we're strictly doing this as an, um, a live thing, streaming on Facebook and YouTube. Um, but what it does is it brings a, an awesome group together that we get to tie a couple flies, drink some beer. Um, as you watch the show, if you are here and it's new, you're going to see there's lots of um, kind of feature things we do every night from, you know, from doing our why, which we'll talk about later. We do some other fun things. Bingo, as Dana already mentioned, chances to win prizes. We've had some awesome sponsors come on board that have basically allowed us to take this to another level. Um, but most importantly, it's about the people. And that's why we said earlier, comment. We want to know you're here because it's totally. important for us to... Um, validate that you're here with us and that we get to know you're here so yeah absolutely so uh old man river brewing company tim yes there it is there it is i love it tim I'm loves going it with a different one here what's and tim is not having a sleepover tonight so he's gonna just keep it relaxed tear. well i'm gonna go with the uh crispy pill crispy so pills, there's a backstory about the beer you're about to crack it might be froze doesn't feel firm let's hope it doesn't <laughs> Well, just check for the ice slushy. So what happens up here in Canada? <laughs> it is minus 45 degrees. Oh, yeah. It's frozen. It's got some slushies. There's other ones in there that are not quite as hey. froze. Beer slushy. But hey, so I thought, you know what? My friend Tim's going to come over later, and I want to do a good friend thing for him and get him some cold beer. So I took the beer in the big Yeti cooler, <laughs> and I put it on the deck this morning. And I thought, that's a great thing to do, Dana. You're just going to let the cooler cool down for a little bit and then shut the lid. And that thing should be great for days on end. The only problem is I forgot about it outside on the deck. And five hours later, <laughs> uh, we got beer slushies. So uh, that's kind of the situation with Tim's beer. <laughs> the, only, the only he's, way to do he, this is to... He's clearly having a, <laughs> We're going like a that. trouble there we go. with that. So... Um, another one. So that's Thursday Night Live, guys. It's just a, a show. We just have some fun here. We tie some flies. If you're interested and you really want to be curious about tying flies, if you're new to tying flies, this is the place to be. Because unlike watching a YouTube video, you can just simply ask your questions here. And we have a thing oh, called... <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> I'll be back. That's, this is uh... making such a mess. Yep. <laughs> I... I... <laughs> <laughs> I told you guys. I, what did you do? I, I, I just kind of. I. You know what? You know what we also do. We have some really good sponsors, and we're just gonna say thanks, and we'll be right back.
with the amount of time we spend in front of our vices. Don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut? here to the comments Oof. okay so just wanted you because tim left and he didn't get to see all the comments but yes you could dress them up but you can't take them out <laughs> i told you it was froze nothing more i could do there but let's get back to what really matters the part about thursday night because we're gonna tie two flies tonight and sometimes we start to show a little stressed because uh uh things go wrong before we get going but tonight, it's kind of chill. Yeah. We're kind of cool with things, Lay other back. than it being minus 5,000 outside. Mm -hmm. But here we are, ready to tie. We're going to tie two flies tonight, but I just kind of want to explain for some people who are new. Mm -hmm. And if you're not new, maybe you've been here for a little bit, but I have failed you because I haven't quite explained how this works. So if you need a bingo card because you want to win prizes, everybody is welcome it costs you nothing you just got to throw in your email and the reason that's there is so that somebody doesn't get 50 bingo cards um, there's ways of getting 50 bingo cards and if you need 50 bingo cards feel free to enter 50 different email addresses <laughs> that's fine too but besides the point the bingo cards can be found at flyfishingbowriver.com slash thursday night live pretty simple there so if you go onto our website and you click on Thursday Night Live, or if you go to flyfishingbowover.com slash uh, TNL, Thursday Night Live, TNL S4, it'll take you to this page that I have pulled up right here. And that is all things about season four. Mm -hmm. So what you can do, uh, show them the kits. Yeah, we, yeah. <clears throat> we do uh, pre-package and build kits for people who want to tune in. Uh, all of these videos are stored on YouTube, so you can go back and find uh, all these videos when you want. Uh, like you saw in the last episode, we've been doing what we call quick ties. So you can go back with each fly that comes in these kits, and you can go and get the, uh, the quick tie and, and follow along. So what's in the kits is these bags for, for episodes. So like today, episode three, you're going to get a kit just like that, which Tim pulled out of the box and he's going to be tying from and so in there you're going to get two patterns so tonight is a sparkle minnow and a soft hackle pheasant tail so you're going to get those two patterns completely tied so go fish them do whatever you want put them in your vise take a photo for instagram whatever you got to do <laughs> but you're also going to get material to tie those flies up to two more times so there's a lot of people in here who have purchased these kits and now they're opening up episode three right now, getting the materials laid out. And Tim's gonna instruct them with the material that's in their kit, how to put together those flies. So we say up to two more times because sometimes material and the way you use material is subjective, but essentially you should get two more flies. So you should get kind of six flies out of the whole entire thing. There's 20 episodes, so I keep doing the math. Why don't I never remember? So you get 40 <laughs> patterns and you get enough material to tie each of those patterns twice. So I think you're around 120 flies uh, if you walk out of here. You go buy the Sparkle Minnow at the store. That's about a $6 fly. Uh, do the math on your own. So now you're here. If you don't want to buy a kit, it doesn't matter because you're still welcome to come and hang out with us. Because mm -hmm. if you go to this website here, what it shows you is season four, episode one, and there's silent bob streamer okay it gives you all of the material right here that you're going to need to tie along with us so if it's not in your budget to get one of these kits that's totally fine we still want you to come here and hang out with us and all the material for that fly is right there this was episode one we also tied the sulfur nymph which is right here all the material that you're going to need is right there episode two okay all the material for the two flies that we tied if you click on these um this this picture here it'll take you to uh, re-watch the full episode of episode two if you click on these photos of the fly that's going to take you to the quick tie 
So maybe you just want to hang out and drink beer and you don't have a kit, but you just got all the materials which are here. You're going to get your materials. Click on that photo. It's going to take you to the quick tie. It's about a five to 10 minute tutorial from Tim um, without all the BS like we're doing right now. And so that's for episode two. And so here's episode three right now, folks. It's a coffee sparkle minnow, which I just said. Here's all the materials, okay? And the soft hackle pheasant tail, all the materials right here. So we've done this for all 20 episodes because we want you guys, whether you get a kit or not, to come and hang out with us on Thursdays, learn to tie flies, the comments, be engaged in the comments. We also want you guys to learn about fishing. So if you have fishing questions, we kind of open up the space for people to talk, learn, become better people, become better fishermen, and become better fly tires. And so you can see right here, this episode is called Yellowstone Night. So I, I did put a cowboy hat on Tim. I think I saw <laughs> Beth one wear, wear one once. So uh, flyvisionbowriver.com slash TNLS4. That's all your information that you're going to need for episode or for season four. Okay. There's theme nights. There's a lot of theme nights this year. So keep updated with that stuff. And you're going to know in advance, like next week, you dress up, take photos at your tie-in table or wherever. You have a chance to win some great prizes. And I'm talking these prizes, they're not, it's not yeah, just a sticker pack and a, and a pack of marabou. It's, it's, it's a lot of stuff that goes into these prizes each and every week. So mm -hmm. there. There it is. <sighs> That's a huge resource though, guys. Um, go back and look through it especially if you're a little curious about those material lists or, or a super good giveaway. Because um, <clears throat> at some point, if you've tied everything out of our packages, you're also gonna need to go back and find some more. So head on back and yeah. see the material list. It's gonna the other you. thing you can do is I know uh, RockyMountainFlyShop.net, they've got all these materials. You just go and add to the cart and you can purchase all the materials, like just the full packages. So you're probably gonna be spending around $90 a fly to get the materials. Uh, but if you head over to their website, they got that all set up. Uh, they're super awesome, very supportive, and a huge sponsor of us here at Thursday Night Live. So we're just, we're evolving, and we're listening to you guys, and we're just trying to make this a, a better place for everybody from all different kind of levels. Um, I think a really good example is Cole, who's here tonight, mm -hmm. and uh, never tied a fly before. He, never. Uh, he, he got a kit, he got a self advice, and all of a sudden he's sending us photos, and I'm <laughs> like, there's no way. Yeah, and it's they're good. Way. They're not yeah. like it's, I mean, it's awesome. And it was fun because that night that we were together, we, we had met out at uh, tracks. Like the community totally. that was there were so excited that he was going to start tying, and everybody's offering, yeah. like, oh, you need some tools, you need this. You're like, people are all over it, and it's exciting to see that how the group comes together and really wants to help each other, not just in fly tying. I mean, we, you can call it cheesy if you want, but in life, this is this place is a safe place. We get to talk about some vulnerable things, um, not just about fishing. So, yeah. But it is a is a place where we say there is no stupid question. So ask away. We're always going to try to take take the time um, to stop and answer a question. Which brings me to a three little word, three little word. It's not really a word, but we say SOS. Okay? SOS. And that doesn't matter whether I'm tying and you say SOS. I'll stop. We'll answer a question. Maybe you just need a minute to catch up. Um, I have got some feedback being that <clears throat> I am a little bit quick, but that is um, the show needs to no, move. Not from <laughs> so, your wife. No. <laughs> is she watching? <laughs> I doubt it. Hopefully you, not. Do you need a place to stay tonight? I'm Maybe sorry. I now. <laughs> I'm sorry, Trish. I love you. <laughs> uh, but it's Let's a talk of fly time. <laughs> it's good because you can stop us and ask any questions, say SOS, and let us know what you need. Um, but when it comes to tying, we will move through things um, semi quickly. And, but that's what the quick ties are for. You're able to go back and yeah. pause and to take your time. Um, the show does but, need to move, but we will stop and answer questions. But time's irrelevant here tonight. Mm -hmm. And honestly, you guys um, hit us up. If, if you crank through this and you have questions and you want to reach out after, uh, hit SOS if you need. Uh, I know a lot of people have reached out and they say they just hang out and drink beer with us and then they go back tomorrow and then they tie the flies. So what, whatever your jam is, quick jim needs to know what thread is first because <laughs> okay let's uh jim throw on some six aught um something in olive or darker color brown something like that i'm gonna tonight i'm gonna use a uh, utc 140 so and that's similar to a six aught six aught thread something dark doesn't really matter the color but 
yeah that steve gardner's in the house coming from youtube steve what's up brother hey, what's up steve <clears throat> um yeah so i might take offers so it, <laughs> here's the thing a lot of comments come rolling in here let me just head us back over to the comment screen so um uh thread on the fly i need short scissors but i wanted to answer a question because did you see that one from joel about the poster yeah so but first kenny yeah. kenny well, bob there it there's literally we're all rookies in fly fishing huh. so never feel like a question is a dumb question honestly and if we don't catch it there's a lot of people in here that are super knowledgeable and they're going to probably help you out but ask the question again if we kind of skim past it, but Sparkle Minnow is deadly for bull trout. Y yes. So streamers, <laughs> yes. Any streamers, but yeah. I think something to kind of add to that is um, that flies aren't totally species specific. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've seen people post stuff like, oh, this, this is a, a great dry fly for brook trout. Uh, well, basically anything on the top, like Ber Berkey's will hit anything. So let's start thinking more of the fish and the, and the, the characteristics of the fish and then work our way back to the fly fishermen. So obviously from the fish to the fly fishermen, the first thing they're going to encounter is the fly. But when you think about their feeding habits or their characteristics, I highly doubt a bull trout's going to eat a crab, but it might not eat a crab pattern as a crab pattern, but it just might see it as something that it, it strikes. Remember, fish don't have arms. So if something comes in their zone or in their in their area, they can't push it away like we would. They, they bite it, um, yeah. which is why gear fishing is super productive because it's just a predatorial strike or a territorial strike. Um, but so, yeah, this is a great streamer uh, for fish that eight streamers bull trout char brook trout rainbow trout brown trout white fish Maybe. probably, <laughs> probably. What, don't, what don't they eat yeah no it's so. a good, it, it is a good question though think of think like dana said think of it as a food source as a bait fish bait fish is bait fish so so then what joel was asking was there's this a enormous poster of uh all the flies that were tying this year um it is it is for sale i honestly think that the the printing cost was like 60 dollars. so if that's something you want to pay you can pay for the printing i don't care to make anything off of it if you want them i think they're super awesome so just send me a message a, a dm or something on instagram after and uh i can we can figure something out uh which sean never got his on the Christmas break when he was down here. So mm. uh, I know Laura's still waiting to get her kit in the mail, which she got, she won at Christmas. Um, <laughs> where was that? Uh, somebody said he stole. I feel like I'm all alone here when we're scrolling through comments. <laughs> I know, it's true. Craig said uh, <clears throat> Cole stole his photos and posted them. <laughs> yes, we needed tonight too, Chaz. Oh, that's so rewarding. Look up just a little bit. Right there, Cole. We were talking about this the other day. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad you figured out the whip finish. Cause so, we're, yeah. That's a hard one to figure out, but uh, Dana was able to go back to one of the episodes uh, last year or the year before and pull out a section yeah. where we had talked about the whip finish and kind of shortened it up to just show you guys. And I'm glad you figured it out because that's a... So, yeah, if you are watching on YouTube, feel free to subscribe. Whatever you got to do to feel like you're really a part of it. Um, that definitely helps us out. So if you're on YouTube and you haven't subscribed, uh, hit subscribe. That's cool. If you're on Facebook, mm -hmm. it's kind of where the party's at, but that's why we built this comment screen <laughs> for you guys. So we could all sit here as we're looking. Scott wants to know if ADOT is okay. Yep. I actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I already, I lied to, <clears throat> to Jim anyways, we're going to start with the nymphs. So you can go with anything smaller. Ah, I love it. You yeah. screwed him. Yeah, I screwed him good. He's totally, th he's <laughs> absolutely thrown out right now. So, but yes, Scott. That's Adot not a nymph is, you got in here. Well, it kind of. I mean, it, we just said. Well, that's it's not a Euro specific. nymph. That's a Euro nymph. This is Troy's nymph. <laughs> Troy. <laughs> Where's my, my, my bobbers here? Where's my Troy? Nymphs. Yeah, he had four of those. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> uh, largemouth bass. I've never caught a bass on anything. See, I've caught him, but not on, on fly gear. So That's a good question. Where is I, Blake? Where is, where is Blake at right now? Like, he's, where is he from? he's in the Carolinas. All the Carolinas. South Carolina? Yeah. I know I'm, it's like saying Calgary or Edmonton, so he's going to kill me if I'm wrong. <laughs> the red ones. Um, and Sean has been banned from Thursday Night Live. What? what? Yeah. He's... What about... <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of Sean, folks. <laughs> What's up, Derek? How, howdy. Howdy do. Tom, what's up? Bass love streamers. Okay. Do, 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 do. Yes, I would love to catch a bass on a fly rod or anything. (laughs) Trout in Alberta. Who's that? uh, I think it's Ryan. Hmm? Ryan. Ryan. So you guys see I moved the mic out of my face because I was having a fight with the mic. It was stealing the focus. (laughs) I tried to set Tim up with one of these so you guys stop complaining about all the audio issues, but... We'll get it figured out. Sooner or later, it's Ryan. I knew that. Okay. Mike, Texas Hill Country. Yes, I... That, like, literally, I would love to cross that border. Yeah. SOB. So I think Tim, uh, Jim screwed up, and it's <laughs> SOS. He, SOB. I think he's, stop. Calling, he's calling me something else. Stop. Short of breath. Oh, you're short of breath. Short of breath. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Call Debbie. <laughs> Jim is short yeah. of breath. Uh, it's, it's the vid. Get him in. Okay. So Sean's taking or- offers on his. He doesn't want it. Okay. Everything Sean's won on the show, he's not wanted. <laughs> it's sitting in my basement. So. Oh man. Okay. Well, folks. Without further ado, I want to show to you from our friend, Mr. Pipke. I hope I'm saying it right. This episode of the Baking Cam, and why am I in the background? I like it. It's coming from it. All purpose flower. There it is, folks. Now take your guess. What is he making? Yeah. It says says it. Well, you it took all the fun right out of it, didn't you? I, I think we should be guessing. I, I didn't mean to take all the fun out of it. <laughs> but how cool is this, guys? Dana, why don't you kind of explain what's yeah. going on here? Okay, so guys, this is really cool. <laughs> there you go. It's just me behind the baking. So Glenn, who is new flashback, okay, his Instagram's up there. This is Lucy's Ginger Molasses Cookies. So... Glenn reached out to me over Christmas and he goes, are you guys taking um, requests for the baking cam? And I was like, what a brilliant idea. So so given all things Thursday Night Live, I really feel weird when I'm, when I'm not in the scene, but I am in the scene. <laughs> but you are. So Glenn's like, I'll, I'll send all the recipe like this, like all the materials, essentially like we're tying later. And then later on in the show, this are all going to form something beautiful. So if you want the recipe for this, reach out to Glenn at New Flashback. Uh, he's on Facebook as New Flashback. And he's also on Instagram as New Flashback. And so please submit your baking for the baking cam over the next 16, 17 episodes. Uh, because we thought, what a really cool idea that to let you guys be a part of this with your baking and your recipes. And if you do submit the actual recipe, I can't remember if Glenn did, but it, we had a issues, technical issues. Um, yeah. So that's kind of how that works. And uh, <laughs> all right, all right. I missed the Jesus hair, Dana. So, oh, it's <laughs> the show, the show is just, be, who said that? Cody did, just up, Cody to me go. Right there. I missed, I missed oh, the Jesus hair, Dana. The Jesus hair. Oh, it's so good. Uh, Trout in Alberta is banned on Facebook, where I'm usually at. <laughs> yes. So if you're banned on Facebook, head to YouTube. But here we are, folks. It's 7.32. We get half an hour to ramble, ramble. <laughs> and then we all? actually have a little bit of a video for you guys that we're going to show today. Um, yeah. So there it is. I'm going to send this over to... Tim. Yeah. And uh, we'll have to try to figure out how to get <laughs> Hopefully we get a vice in there somewhere. Oh, that uh, is not what we're tying. <laughs> Although. 
Although that was one darn sexy fly. That didn't go anywhere. It didn't go anywhere. Apparently it's not good enough to it's win not, anything. It's not good enough. That was, in a, that was in a competition. and uh, We're not sour about it. I mean, I'm personally, I'm not. Just not, a little. Not at all. <laughs> I do with my kid. There it is. Okay, guys. So uh, get out your threads. Thread your bobbins. Tim, why don't you show people how to thread a bobbin? <laughs> I'm trying to find where I put my kit. Oh, jeez. Well, you had it in your hand. I you know. blew up a beer. I know. I blew up a beer. There's been so many things that have happened. Did I put it back in the box? It's See, this, it's just you. I'm not taking it off of you. Oh, come on. That's there a nice is. shirt. Why don't you turn around? <laughs> I'm going to spill something else. <laughs> so if you like the shirts we're wearing tonight, folks, you can get them at Press N. P R E S S N S O W dot com and look for Fly Fishing Board over there, Pressonso dot com. They're an American company, so they'll ship right to you guys in the States and you'll probably get it within one or two days. Uh, that's awesome. Not like Canada. No, not like Canada. There we go, guys. We are in season four, episode three. Can't believe it. So what we're gonna start off with tonight is we're gonna do our soft tackle. We'll finish off with our um, our streamer second. So Neither of these flies actually take much time, even though they do look a little complicated. Um, so what you're gonna see first off is I'm gonna, st ooh, I gotta go down here, sorry. Uh, this first package, you're gonna see that there is some hackles in there. It's a smaller, uh, <laughs> oh gosh darn it. Smaller uh, package with a bead and a hook. The trip. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what the? I didn't check my phone. Yeah, she probably called you first to read me out. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, be careful because there are little pieces in there. So I'm just going to dump those out of my table so you don't lo lose anything. Um, you should have um, your materials in here for our pheasant tail soft tackle. Okay, so you're going to have a few things. You're going to have your hackle feather, which we'll come back to. We'll talk about. You're going to have a little bit of um, peacock curl. You are also going to have your pheasant tail. And that's going to be about it. It's a really simple pattern. You got a little bit of wire in there as well, some ultra small wire. So what I want you to start off by doing is going ahead and grabbing, and now this, this we really wanted to make this fun for you, so we went with a super small hook. Mm. Um, I can't, I don't know if this is a 16 or 18, but it is not big. It is small. <clears throat> so something that can kind of help sometimes, guys, let me see if I can find mine here. Um, if you have plunger style hackle pliers, they're even better. I don't have any on me, but if you grab your hook in some hackle pliers of some kind, and then you grab your bead, it's a little bit easier to put in. Now you want to stick the hook in through, so I got my bead in my hand. You want to stick your um, hook in through the small side of the bead, okay? So you have a, a, a little bit bigger opening on one side and a smaller on the other. So you want to stick it in the small side first. Then you can <clears throat> get that secured in your vise. And you'll notice that we are tying on an ore vise tonight as they are one of our sponsors. And even if they weren't one of our sponsors, we would still be tying on their vices because we really like them. Okay. Super small. This is super small. I'm going to tie this in the standard jaw as well. Um, on the vise tonight, you could you could definitely, this is small enough to go into the midge vise. I just like, uh, I'm just going to tie in this just for <clears throat> simplicity. So there we go. We got our um, our bead and our hook in the vise. Now we talked about thread. What are we going to use? Um, something smaller on this, guys. Uh, you want to not take up a ton of space on there. So in the, in the kits, if you bought our kits, we actually give you I believe it's three aught, six aught, and eight aught. Yeah, uh, all of white and all of white uh, and black, I believe. So I would go um, in this one. I'm gonna use some white thread. What's, what's cool, Tim, is I also allowed myself to enter I this, see this screen. Now so you can not just hear his voice. I can chirp you mm. from afar. Even better. But okay. it's kind of weird when I just sit here. <laughs> I like to be behind the scenes. <laughs> So what I got in here today, guys, I'm gonna use some white thread, and I'm this is nano thread, so this is super thin, super strong. I really prefer to use just whatever the smallest thing is you can on these smaller nymphs. So whatever the smallest thread you has, have is, let's go ahead and do that. So let's start by um, starting our thread. I'm gonna start it just behind the eye, okay? Wrapping rearward. I'm gonna get about to the hook bend, and I can let that hang. And I'm gonna get that thread out of there. <clears throat> hold, just hold tight. I, I think a few people have mentioned they've dropped the hook. Which is impressive, uh, given that you've dropped the hook, you've typed. So Blake's probably texting with his toes. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So well we'll just tell a joke, Tim. Tell a joke. Well, pick up your hook, boys. Don't want to waste any time on this one. That's that's not a joke. I know. What do we? Elaine's that's a nice hat somewhere. you got. Where's it from? This hat? You mean this this little thing here? 
one of our awesome sponsors from Watermaster. Um, not to give too much away, but there is maybe one or two available or more in some giveaways coming up. Oh so, my goodness. Just saying. <laughs> I thought you never asked. Awesome prizes. Okay, guys, hopefully that you have found your hook and have now placed it back in your vise with your bead on it. What we're going to do here is we're going to start, and everybody likes to, tie, likes to tie their pheasant tails a little different. This is a pheasant tail with a collar, so very simple fly, but I like to do it the way that I do it, so that's the way I'm going to teach you how to do it. I'm going to start by putting on my thin wire first, okay? I'm going to leave it on the near side of the fly. Okay, I'm going to make sure I secure it, and as I come up... <laughs> Let me read Blake's comment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that little, Blake. It's just the camera angle. Yeah, it's the camera adds 10 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> wait, <laughs> what? Wait. wait. That's, that's it, not a good thing. He truly is 80 pounds. The, the camera <laughs> takes away a good 50, okay? That's Dana's a good point. huge. <laughs> I have a wide angle lens. <laughs> I'm a big dude, okay? I've earned all of my weight. Okay, we got our, we got our, uh, our uh, wire in there. So let's go ahead and we're going to grab our pheasant tail. Now, you're going to see your pheasant tail is kind of like this. We're going to take maybe, oh, it's somewhere around six to eight pieces. So about half of what we gave you there. Make sure you keep the tips aligned. Okay, and this is, we're going to, we're going to tie in the tips and then we're going to use the, use the rest of the stem and the fly. So we got our, our wire. We're going to pull that to the near side. Make sure my tips are lined up. Now I'm going to do a tail that is roughly the same length as the hook shank. So I want to kind of measure off my hook. I'm going to have that hanging back about that far. Switch hands. Now I'm going to take a nice gathering wrap. I'm gonna secure. So you saw there how my thread wanted to jump forward instead of jumping rearward. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take a clockwise wrap. And now if you watch, it jumps against my finger. Okay, I'm left-handed. So I did a clockwise wrap. If you're not, if you're tying right-handed, do a counterclockwise wrap. So you always wanna spin your bobbin towards your, your finger on this side. If you spin it towards that finger, it's gonna cause your thread to jump against your finger. So I want that to jump back, so that's why I spun it that direction, okay? Get one or two thread wraps so it's nice and secure, okay? So I got my tail hanging off the back. Now if you feel like it's a little too long at this point, you can always adjust it a bit. So that came out a little long, so I'm gonna tug that forward just a bit. I like how it's splayed out for me. Um, <clears throat> at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift up the back end of those pheasant tail fibers. I'm gonna take one, two wraps, just for security. Now this is kind of a neat trick. Um, some, sometimes with these pheasant tail, when you go to wrap forward, one or two of the, the stem pieces will actually try to go ahead of the other ones and we want them to stay together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by taking my first wrap back, leaving my thread here, okay? So I'm gonna take my first wrap, make sure I tug it right up and cover up my thread wraps. Now as I come forward, I'm just gonna palmer it forward and I'm just gonna lean against that thread I've left there as I move forward. So what that thread is doing is it's keeping all those pheasant tail fibers right together. And at the same time, it's advancing my thread. So once I get up to just kind of behind the bead, I'm gonna take a thread wrap over top of it, tug down, do one more, couple in front, couple behind, and now I'm good to go ahead and snip this out. So you can see that that pheasant tail, because of the, the type of um, material that it is, it actually has these really cool, almost like barbs on it. And so when you, when you palmer it forward, it creates a really nice looking body, okay? Now what I'm gonna do though, is because pheasant tail is kinda you know, like peacock curl and that it's a little bit fragile, we're gonna take and we're gonna advance our, um, our wire now. We're gonna wrap, just palmer it, nice open spirals even forward until we hit our thread. I'm gonna go behind and front, behind and front. You can either helicopter that off or go ahead and grab your buddy's scissors and wait, snip that out. Wait, What? don't touch those. <laughs> Grab a crummy pair of scissors. You never want to use your good scissors, but I always keep a crappy pair of scissors that I don't really like. They're definitely not sure, obviously. And I'm gonna um, just, I always hang out with those. I, I like to, to use scissors when I'm cutting it out. Helicoptering works, it does work, but it never seems to be as clean. So I, I prefer to do it this way. Um, so once I get to this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a few thread wraps back, okay? I wanna wrap back, so if I was measuring here, and I measured my bead. So my bead, I'm gonna use that as a measurement scale. I'm gonna come back about a full bead length to about there, okay? And I'm if you don't have a bead, this fly is tied perfectly without a bead also. It is tied without a bead. In case your perfectly. bead fell on the floor yeah. or for some reason <laughs> it fell on the floor before I packaged it. Remember that too. All we're doing is we're creating a little bit of space to make a thorax here, okay? So I'm gonna bring that thread back to about there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get a hold of my peacock curl. Very nice material. 
also a little fragile, so I'm going to take the, the most fragile piece is at the tip. So I take it, I'm going to break that off, get rid of that, and I want it to be nice and plump too, so I like to get a little deeper into the, into the actual hurl. Now I'm going to take some thread wraps down, put my, put my thread back forward. I'm going to throw just a little half hitch in there so that I can... Just do that again a little slower. I, it's going to be hard to see, but... So all I've done here, guys, for a half hitch is I'm, I just take two fingers, right? Okay, I'm just wrapping a simple knot so you can see if I flip that over, try to get it there. So you can see how my thread just crossed itself. And then I slide that down so it goes over top of my bead. And I'm, it's literally just a single overhand knot. But what we do is we call it's like if you're typing something, yeah. you hit save, control, control S. We just want to save our work. So that now I can take that and set that over on my bobbin cradle. Okay, it's out of the way. I so know. just hold tight, <clears throat> just hold tight. Mm -hmm. Just let the folks catch up. The old helicopter. <laughs> to, yeah. So question is, uh, what are your opinions on using different dyed pheasant tails? Uh, that's a great question, Matt. I, I actually, uh, you know, I like, this is a natural color pheasant tail. I really like those dyed ones. You can do so much, so much with them. Um, especially, let's say you tie this in a larger size, like a much larger size down to even like a 10 or a 12. This just starts to look like a stonefly nymph if you use, let's say, a, a more of a golden colored pheasant tail. Um, there's so many things you can do by changing the color, and this is generally a mayfly imitation, but it's just a searching pattern. So if, let's say, you had some olive pheasant tail, you had some kind of gold color pheasant tail, even black pheasant tail in this size would look very much like a betis pattern. So if you were to do that, and you had just a variety in your box, um, it's a really good thing to have because you're, you're able to actually search, we call them searching patterns, but you can search more of the same pattern if you have more color variations. And explore, there's actually, I've seen some really crazy colored pheasant tails, so it's it's kind of cool that you can but that's, go all over. That also goes to uh, like a prince nymph, a copper john. Mm. Like, I think, I think once we start thinking of things outside the box, um, and, and thinking, oh, the natural whatever mayfly that this one was created was in these uh, natural colors. I mean, there's people that get, in my opinion, a little super crazy on their yeah. colors. Yeah. And it just, it is what it is. But like, you got your golds, your yellows, okay, your browns, your tans, your olives, your greens, your blacks, your reds. I mean, tie up a whole bunch of these and have different colors like that because mm -hmm. you'll be impressed at when a chartreuse copper john starts to work really well. Like giving away secrets. Versus a regular copper copper john. Mm. Sometimes that's the difference between uh, very few fish and a lot of fish. And somebody will say the copper john was on, and then you won't ask the question. What, what color, color of Copper John is on? So hopefully Jim's caught up now, <laughs> found his bead or didn't. Um, so just get the questions. All right. Doo, doo, doo. Yeah, I think we covered all the ones I could see. Looks like Rocky Mountain Fly Shop he is in the house. Is back he in the is No, he he's not home. Uh, not home. He's not home. But he's here with but he's us. Here. We're thankful for that. Okay guys, so we're gonna get back on this fly. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that, uh, that peacock curl that we tied in. Now all we're gonna do is we're gonna palmer it from where we tied it in forward. And we're just trying to create a nice little bulk looking thorax. This stuff does a good job of doing that. It's quite plump in appearance. We're gonna go right up against that bead like so. And then we're gonna bring our thread back to this, to the fun. Gonna take a wrap behind it, a wrap in front of it. One more behind it. And then we can go ahead and trim out that, uh, that peacock. Okay. And now we're virtually done. And the nice part about this pattern is it is actually a pretty quick one. Um, and a lot of people even complicate the pheasant tail. But if you do, you can do, once you do, like we always say, if you, if you tie one, it takes tie a while. Tie 12. Tie 12. By the last six, you're rocking and rolling. It's real quick. So the last piece of this puzzle is going to be the uh Oh, West Side's in the house. West Side? James Riley. Oh, Mr. James Riley. Riley. What's up, James? <clears throat> okay. Okay, so, hackle before the hackle, the finishing stage is a question. Is the copper john good for ice fishing? You know what's good for ice fishing? Not Don't going. ask Dana. I love ice fishing. Dana is a little bit uh, biased of it. Um, in my experience, when it comes to fishing flies and ice fishing, if you're fishing for trout, 
um, the time of year because you're really not getting a ton of hatches to happen under the ice. Obviously, things aren't, aren't really moving. You will still have nymphs that move in and out of the bottom. Um, my most success is on more like balanced leeches, uh, things like that, but throwing on a pheasant tail or something small like a scud, things that they're gonna see commonly is not a bad idea because it looks like food for them. And like Dana said, they don't have hands, so they put it in their mouth to check it out. Um, but not a bad question, definitely worth trying. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's Tammy here with you. Oh, Tammy, Colin. Colin's still <laughs> working hard. Working too hard. Hard water all the way. Sean yeah, is right, a, Sean. Sean is, you bring the jerky and let's go. Every gift he's won on Thursday Night Live, he has refused to pick up. <laughs> he just wants to give them back. Yes. Matt was out of Dixon Trout Pond. Here I am being the oh, old, yeah. uh, the creeps. That's awesome. That's awesome here. So, yeah. And so, r randomly, Matt, I ran into the video <coughs> that you posted. And I just want to say thank you. Your, your words were extremely kind. And uh, that's super cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's awesome. We're super glad to have you here. We're ha we're glad to have you a part of the TNL fam. And I'm super glad that all your vehicles are super deckled. <laughs> super deckled. And all of our stickers, which oh, are yeah. here, you can get them on our website if you want, guys. And be like, be like Matt. All right, Tim. <laughs> Sorry. I'm Finish that fly. That. Let's do it. Okay, so we're talking hackle. Okay. Hackle can be a little bit of a frustrating thing to put on because at sometimes it's hard to also find, you know, what is the right size? How does it match? And everybody's going to have their opinion on hackle, especially on like a guide's hair's ear with a hackle or let's say a pheasant tail with a, ha with a hackle. I prefer my hackle feathers to extend at least close to the back of the bend of the hook, if not beyond, whereas some people like them to be super short of a collar and look more like a wing case. Um, it all depends on how you're fishing them as well. Are you swinging them? Are you swinging this nymph? Are you fishing a dead drift? Um, it might it might change your opinion on, on what style you want. But what I'm gonna show you tonight is off of this same little, this is just a partridge cape. I'm gonna show you how many different soft tackle types we could get off of it. So I'm gonna show you a few. So here's a couple, okay? You can tell right there, totally different, gonna be in a different appearance um, as far as what the hackle is gonna look like. This one over here, you got lots of color variation. This one here is more of a dark one. Um, you also have ones like this that are that look almost similar to this guy, but they have a ton more length. So if you wanted to go for a little bit longer appearance, um, I'm gonna stick with this one. This is the one of the one like similar to what we have in your in your kit. That's what I pull out of my kit. Um, and we're gonna go with that, okay? So tying in one of these feathers, and basically all the soft tackle is just basically one full wrap around, maybe a little bit more to create a full um, effect around the fly. But on a small one like this, we don't want too much. If we wrap more than once or once and a half around, then it just covers up all the other work and we don't get to see what we had below. Okay, so <clears throat> first thing you wanna do is you wanna go in and pull out all the fuzz off the bottom of the feather. Um, Cause you don't want any of that on there. We're not gonna use it anyways. Why don't I know that button? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for a reason. Yeah, for a reason. Um, and then what we want to do, and, and these can be tough to work with because they're super tiny. Some we'll, we can use hackle pliers to help us too. But you've got experience. What I need to do, <laughs> yes, <laughs> is we need to go and draw back the feathers. So you can see here, we want to isolate just the very tip. So I'm going to try to do it even a little bit more because we want to be this, like the the, sm uh, the the higher we can get up this feather, right to the very top, we basically get access to the to the smaller hackle fiber. Okay. So I'm gonna be right up there. Now you can tell that there's a bit of, a, there's a concave side, so there's an underside, and there's, so that would be the underside, a little duller in color, a little bit shinier in color on the other side. So we wanna face the underside back towards the rear of the fly. So to start this one off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this. You can see how I have, I've isolated that tip. Now I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna trim off the very tip kind of creating a bit of a triangle. That's gonna be my tie-in, that's gonna hold it, and then I can trim that out if it, if it extends where I don't like it. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna take a wrap behind, secure it, one, one be, uh, sorry, in front, and behind, in front, and behind. So I know that's not going anywhere, okay? So that's what I'm left with, it's tied in. I do have a little piece of that that was stuck out. I was, I'm gonna trim that out, maybe take one more just to be sure. You really don't wanna to have to come back and do this. Now again, I'm gonna do that little soft, or that little, um, not soft tackle, I'm gonna do that, um, why am I completely blanking? Half hitch, that's what I'm trying to say. The half hitch. I'm gonna take one little half hitch to save my work so I know that's not gonna come undone, because that'd be a bummer. And I'm gonna set my thread out of the way, just so that I can work with this, this hackle now. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm, it's got 
some simple hackle pliers here. I'm going to go ahead and grab onto that stem just so I can have better control of it. Be careful not to break it. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to make, like I said, maybe one and a half, one, one and a half wraps is going to be sufficient for what I want here. And now as I go, you might have some of these little um, fibers that kind of want to go out on their own, but I'm just going to kind of stroke them rearwards to go where I want oh, them yeah. to. Okay, so that's about I've one and a half. I've refrained from uh, saying things like, oh yeah, just the tip. Just the tip. Stroke it rearward. All these things. But I'm not anymore because <laughs> I was gone. That's why I refrained. So now all I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to bring some my thread through. I'm going to secure in front of that, behind it, pull down, make sure I have good locked in. I'm going to go in there and trim out just the butt end of that because we don't want anything extra. Okay, now you can see right now that looks like it's pointed straight up. We don't really love that, but that's okay. We're going to fix it. So what we need to do is we need to take a few thread wraps back over top of it. And what that's going to do is it's going to hold those pointed rearward. So right there is exactly what we're looking for. If we have, you can see how those extend. So they're just behind the hook bend. That's where I like them to be kind of a quarter to a half of the way down the tail. I'm going to go in here. I have just a little piece of that, but I want to trim out. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to whip finish it. Okay, okay. Sean Allison said, I wish I had some shore scissors right now. Well, Sean, I'll make you a deal, okay? I will give Joel your poster if you let me send you shore scissors. Ooh, that's a pretty good deal. You let me know, Sean. It's a really good deal. Great playlist. Are you just amping yourself up? Well, just because Blake's been riding me like a rented mule tonight, so <laughs> and you. Yeah, it's been. It's good. He, it's he good for us. He earned it. Yeah. And there we go, guys. There is our um, soft hackle pheasant tail. Now, I would encourage you to have a few of these in your box, um, and don't hesitate to have a few sizes as well. Hop that up to maybe you know even up to a size 12. This is like a size 16. Don't be afraid to go all the way up the scale. So tur turn it a little bit. You just can one see second. just a little frayed. I'm just going to put just a small spot of a little bit of UV resin there just to make sure. Make my sure you get it in the eye so that when I go to use it, it doesn't work. Yeah, that's that's my go-to. Only do that on beetles for you. Oh, yeah. And and no, you put it all over the beetle so it sinks. <laughs> that's true. I and I'm that swinging too. beetles. Hey, that works too. That works too. Don't be picky. Oh, that's a beautiful fly. And there you go, guys. That will work. I can promise you of that. The good mayfly imitation. Oh, there he is. There, there I am. He back. There I am. That's me, guys, over there in the top of the screen. <laughs> I feel so special. He, he back. I feel so special you let me in on the uh, fly tying uh, camera. Yeah, you got it. So, uh... The next fly that we're going to be tying, we have a little, we have some fun stuff happening before that fly gets going, but we're going to be tying these sparkle minnows. So if you guys have finished off on this one and you want to get uh, your bobbin threaded. What, what are you, you going to use? What are you going to use, Tim? <laughs> okay, so what I originally told Mr. Crawford was that you wanted to use something in the 6 out range. Yeah, well, we knew he he would take an hour to get it ready, yeah, so, so now to, he's ready. Now he's ready. Okay. And he's probably still out of breath. <laughs> so let's go ahead with some 6 aught. We're going to go in something in dark, kind of all of our black or brown is fine. Um, the fly we're tying looks like this. Okay, I'm covering up the head here, but I'll switch it, it over. The fly, the fly we're tying is that. Is that. <laughs> it look, doesn't just look like this. It is Reed this. Jacobs, live in Calgary. What's happening, Reed, on the YouTube? <laughs> Yeah, so the uh, real Jen Lyle folks wants Tim to finish the other eleven, and he'll pick them up later. No, and he's good. a he's a she, she's a she's a he. Bring the pizza. Pizza. I'm, I'm hungry for pizza right now. Dude, anybody at Trax Pub want to send us over a pizza? Because it is pizza night <laughs> at Trax pizza Pub. Night. I know. And I was wondering, once a month, we need to do a Trax Pub. Meet up. Are you guys down for that? Calgary yeah. folks, Edmonton folks, I'm thinking next week. It looks really warm. The weather looks great. If you guys think that that's a great night, I mean, it's Thursday and it's Yellowstone night, 
And you guys can all show up to the bar <laughs> in our too. small town of Old oh, Alberta, man. Canada. And you will fit right in. It won't even yeah. matter. Yeah. <laughs> People won't even know that it's costume night. No. So there's that. Fact. So yeah, we're going to get Ty in the Sparkle Minnow. Okay, 100%. Let's... I got to talk to Trax. <laughs> Let me message him. I'll yeah. message him before, <laughs> before we do this. Before we make this happen. And if uh, Dina Hinshaw leaves us alone for another week. Yeah. If anybody needs a place to stay between my house and the real Jen Lyle's house, <laughs> there's lots of floor to sleep on. And uh, Jen does have a lot of dates to fulfill. <laughs> that's <laughs> She can go back and forth. Oh, man. Yeah, so... Anyways, folks, um, now it's my turn to have a little bit of limelight. Uh, so, so how does the program look from here on out? Well, uh, I'm almost out of beer, so I'm going to highly... Maybe, maybe Tim needs to take a potty break, so that's why Never. I kind of... Uh, remember, Tim, you are still connected. So if we hear Tim peeing, that's because he can't, he can't hear me right now. So I'm just going to turn off his microphone but I can still hear him. You guys can't hear him, but I can hear him. So anyways, folks, here's the the baking cam shirts for Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. Because I think if we go back to the baking cam, which looks a little something like this, and somehow I'm still in the back. And this here is from Glenn Pipke at New Flashback, Lucy's Ginger Molasses Cookies. Okay, so what do they look like when they're all finished? Hot darn. Okay, that's what it looks like. Glenn, send me the recipe. Um, what I'll do is I will post them on our social media at Fly Fishing Bow River. So, or you can just reach out to Glenn, give him a follow, reach out to Glenn at New Flashback. Say, Glenn, what's the recipe? And he'll send you the recipe. So that's Lucy's Ginger Molasses Cookies. So what we're doing on the baking cam is every week, you guys can send us something. Send us the recipe like this. So the before and then the after. Just the same thing we're doing here on Thursday Night Live by making sure we tie the materials together to make food, fish food. So this is human food. Uh, yes, Glenn, I saw the recipe. I, uh, I just don't have, uh, have a way to uh, get it up here on the screen right now. So I'll just have to post it on social media after Fly Fish and Bow River. Uh, those are boat cookies right there. Those are, those are, those are like, oh, hey, Tim's back. Tim's back. So Tim's back. Oh, well, you were peeing, so I'd turn your mic off. We That's, didn't want to hear the I little... Was, I was actually talking to you. I thought you'd have left it on. It's <laughs> a good point. I, <laughs> I thought I could hear you, but uh, <laughs> looks like Dave Jackson's here. He What's needs up, to Dave? set up the recipe on the episode webpage along with the fly time material list. Absolutely. And so if Tim, if you reach behind you and grab that uh, book. So we're uh, thinking yes. at the end of the year that we could do something like this with a recipe book. A collaboration between us and you guys, or your wives, whatever, whoever's the baker. Except just be food. Yeah, so it's us food, not just fish food. That's what's super cool. Well, apparently Kenny Bob has disowned Glenn because he didn't bring those on their fishing trip. So <laughs> Tim looks flushed. Well, hopefully the toilet was flushed. Well, it's freaking hot in here, guys. I got a lot of equipment heating up the air. Uh, who wants a challenge? Someone should make a Copper John inspired. Oh gosh, this is guys. We're on to something, and it's oh, because of you like guys. That. We say this before, but without you guys, we're just a couple dorks wearing stupid t-shirts, hanging out in a basement, <laughs> drinking frozen beer slushies. <laughs> so I like that. Uh, Blake, well, Blake, did you get your pictures. shirt yet? Tim is still uh, hot. The other thing. The other thing we want to do is Blake had had the idea of showing off your tying space. So what we thought of is in this, what we call this, the intermission, you know, we're letting Jim get his, catch his breath. We're letting uh, Cam rethread his bobbin. Um, you know, we're letting people get their, their wits without them before we get into the sparkle minnow. So we thought if you guys uh, have your 
um, fly tying stations. Are you wrecking stuff? No, I'm good. And you're and you're proud of them, and you want to show them off. Uh, send me a DM, and we're, we'll set it up. Maybe we can bring you in here and show off your fly tying space as a bit of a, a totally. guest. And uh, yes, the banana bread recipe. I have a lot of recipes um, that I would love to post here, but I also want this to be about you guys because you guys are awesome and probably more awesome than me. Uh, well, stay away from his lawn, Jen I says. Know, so, sure that's okay. Problem. What we need to do is say a little thanks to our sponsors, and then I'm going to show you guys what the giveaways are. We're going to watch a little short flick. Then we're going to come back and play bingo. So if you don't have your bingo cards, flyfishingbover.com slash Thursday Night Live. Go on there, download your bingo card. It's 100% free, and you get a chance to win. And I bet you there's a couple $300 worth of stuff in this little package that I'm going to pull out from our sponsors and friends of TNL. Um, baking cam shirts. They're not on press and sew. Uh, these ones I just made myself. Very nice. But I would like to get more of those made. But I'm complex with the amount of colors that are in them. So, uh, Mr. Riley, I will be talking to Sylvia and Andrew about this. So, just trying stuff oh, yeah. out. Hang tight. Don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut? Oh, Okay, so Claude, check your junk mail. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have a little bit of a video here, and I'm gonna explain what the video is. But Claude, check your junk mail because the uh, do I have a complex with being bald because I wear this so much? I'm starting to think so. It's I, weird. For I me. do I've miss never, my like, hair. Could you imagine if I had hair and a beard? But see, guys with hair and hair and beard just doesn't look right to me. You gotta be bald with a beard. Schwend, <laughs> Schwend, where are you eating your fruity loops? Uh, no, what are those called? Not for your lips. Okay, so that poster would probably be good by my fly tying table, but okay, Dana. I'd take the shore scissors, perhaps a few stickers or hat, and a guarantee that I catch the damn circus brown. Well, Sean, <laughs> the fact is you caught the brown trout last year. You just didn't land it. it <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, the, he really upped his ante there. The shore scissors, perhaps a few stickers or a hat, and a guarantee. I can make good on the shore scissors and stickers. We don't have any hats for us, so that would have to be from one of the sponsors. Send me a DM, Sean. We'll figure out how to make this happen so that Joel gets uh, a poster. <laughs> gets that poster. <laughs> That's one way of doing it. Absolutely, Blake. Another great idea would be to send in the pics of... Let's let's head over to the comment screen because that's just way better and more fun for everybody mm. to... So, yeah, the shirts... The shirt that Tim has and the shirt I was wearing uh, earlier... Uh, Sean, I'll send you your stuff. <laughs> uh, I just... I just don't like guaranteeing fish, but I'll guarantee you a white fish. <laughs> yeah. We will go deep and we will go yeah. heavy. If you come in my boat, you don't even have to do Okay, not in your things. spam. So, Claude, I don't, I'm, I don't know. Um, yeah, where else? I have. It's a, it's a third-party app, so I have no way of troubleshooting yeah, that. Yeah. Troubleshooting that. Um, maybe try Claude another email and then try getting another one. Uh, I deeply apologize. I don't know how to troubleshoot that because it's not an app that we use. Okay, 
All right, all right, all right. So, folks, what do we want to do? We want to show you guys, uh, and there's a lot of people in here that are in this video that join us on Thursday Night Lives. It's our guide school from last spring. So just at the end of Thursday Night Live last year, we had a guide school, Western Canada Fly Fishing Guide School. What is guide school? What is guide school to you? Well, guide school to me is just, um, you know, people who are interested in possibly entering into the industry, uh, giving them a, a safe space to do that. Um, so we take six days of instruction and time on the water. And what it does is it just brings, um, brings them closer to that target of possibly being able to enter the guide industry. Some of the people who do it don't have no interest in, in guiding and that's awesome too. They just want to, I can't remember how it's put this year, but it was like basically what could be better than six guys or six days with a bunch of friends. Yeah. Um, on time on, on the water. On time on the water. Um, but we have had multiple successful people come out of our guide school um, that guide in the industry, which is, which is really awesome. In fact, I was one of them so that's <laughs> <laughs> a few years ago, but yeah. So um, yeah. for me, it, it did a lot in bridging the, the unknown with what the industry was. Um, so it brought me to, you know, I had a lot of pre-plans in my head of what I thought I was doing and it turned out I had no idea what the industry was and it really helped me bridge the gap. Um, and step in and, and we're to where well, I am now. We gotta meet. Yeah, we literally, that's yeah. how I met Dana was at guide school. Yeah. He was one of the instructors exactly. my first time, so. So yeah, so that's guide school. Uh, it is this year we're running it May 13th to 15th and 20th to 22. Um, if you're interested, reach out. We're gonna talk about it a lot over the next X teen amount of uh, episodes, but here we just wanna show you guys a little video we put together from the spring guide school of 2021 with about 95% of the people who tune in and watch with us on Thursdays. It's about being a better person, yeah, right. right? It really is, yeah. right? The way you treat people. You gotta work on yourself as a person a little bit, right? That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a really cool point. It has nothing to do with catching a fish. Yeah. Nothing at all. Like, that's just a bonus. So these six days were the best six days of my life. Hands down. Hmm. Hands down. I'm uh, Barry Dickaw from Sundry, Alberta. Nice. Mainly I missed uh, taking my kids out fly fishing, like what I did when I was a kid. And uh, now that uh, my kids are growing up, I got grandkids now that are starting to uh, be interested in fishing. I got a five-year-old grandson that's also even starting to fly tie. So I want to now take them out and do some fly fishing on the rivers. So I thought the best way would be to learn how to operate a drift boat. And that's why I came to you guys. Uh, Jeff Green. I'm from Airdrie, Alberta. Uh, I've been guiding kind of softly since 2014 um, and I've always wanted to kind of learn more, get as much information as I can to pass on to my clients. I always knew there was more that I could learn. Um, when I started out um, there wasn't really any resources so when this popped up I'm like yeah this is a it was a good one. I mainly do walk and wades, um, but yeah, I'd, I've always wanted to boat guide, and uh, this seems like a fantastic way to do it. My name is Chas Wade, Edmonton, Alberta. Why guide school? I think is is a great question. It's kind of like why fly fish at all. I think if you really want to dive deep into the passion and gain more knowledge from several different types of guides and people who have guided and experience with a group of students, I think it's a really good way to focus your learning and grow as a person, as an angler. And you get to be involved with an amazing community. These, this group of people that I'm with this weekend uh, and over the next six days, it's gonna be amazing. Um, I'm super stoked to be here. Everybody is super friendly and passionate about the same things. So the values, values alignment, everything, it's just, it's awesome. Uh, Brett Stevens, Edmonton, Alberta. Well, I, I was looking at guide school probably two years ago. So I was like, ah, I think it'd be neat and be the, as you guys kind of put it, get the t-shirt, be the guy. And I was like, oh, that's not really 
a, the reason I should be going to guide school, so I put it off. And so this year, I was looking for something different in life, you know, and getting to know you guys a bit better. The culture is like, yeah, I kind of want to experience it, see what it's all about. And what I found so far with guide school is not just guide school. It's, there's learning about the rowing and all that stuff, yeah, being a guy, but it's, it's pretty cool. The, it's a be a better person school. My name is Colin English. I'm from Olds, Alberta. There's a lot of reasons why I want to take guide school. Some of them are personal, I guess, and some of them are professional. So um, I, I like to take guide school because uh, it gives me exposure to other guides. And that's something that I found in the past is, is uh, has been difficult for me to do, uh, is to find other guides and other people in the industry that are willing to open up and I can talk to and we can have that 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 mentorship or almost that trading of information back and forth. Um, so it's, uh, um, it's a, I think it's a super cool resource to be able to come somewhere um, and have the ability to do that, uh, especially in an environment where, you know, like you feel really safe doing it. Um, walking into a fly shop or trying to cold, cold, cold call people on stuff like that and, and get going in the industry, it's a really hard thing to do. My name is Alex Cicerone from Ontario, born and raised in Toronto. Uh, what we want to guide school is most definitely just the aspect of learning something new. Uh, possibly a new career path and just expanding as a fisherman and a person in a way. Yesterday in class, you're just learning so much and there's so much information to take in. Um, biggest thing would probably be how to row or a boat. Definitely a big challenge and something I'm looking forward to today to learn that and see if it's something my niche or what I want to do. Uh, I'm Kirk McLean. Uh, I'm living in Lethbridge, Alberta right now. Oh, well, guiding something like I've wanted to get into for a bit. Uh, just been bolstering up like my fishing ability, but then understanding like there's a business end to this as well. And without ever working in a fly shop or anything, I was just hoping to get some kind of exposure to behind the curtains of what goes into a guiding day and career of that. And uh, yeah, that's just what I'm looking for here, basically. My name's Justin Fisher from Coldale, Alberta. Uh, mostly what brought me or gave me interest in the program was uh, I really wanted to get a drift boat, but I didn't feel that I was prepared to take uh, my fiance or the dog or whoever it be out on the river and do it safely. So to me, it was just an investment in safety and then possibly growing into something that I can do kind of like as a three day week, as a get away from work, just to get out with people and meet new people. On day seven, people aren't running out saying they're a guide because we all know that there's a lot of work that's gonna be put in for you guys after the course, that's gonna make you uh, a good guide. Right? It's gotta be merit-based. It's not, we're not gonna hide behind, behind uh, a bunch of cool gear that we got on pro deals, right? You have to be proficient and good. That will drive your confidence, your self-esteem, so people will automatically take your lead. Um, if you do go in, we call it a defensive swim position. Um, feet up, right? Um, bum up, because you don't wanna be hitting rocks back stroke and we use the same ferry angle that we do rowing our boats. If we want to go this way, we turn sideways, the current hits us and pushes us and helps us. And you can see what's coming, you got your feet up. Now as we put this all together on the river and then we get people actually fishing out of the boat in the river, we got to start thinking about the fly, the indicator, the speed, which will all come together tomorrow. On a corporate trip, the best thing to do is, 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 is try to do trips with people you know. And um, in the morning, uh, talk it out. Don't be afraid to say, I don't know where that is. So then I, as I'm coming back through, I go to my anchor. So for me, I always do it off the driver's side of the vehicle is how I start it. Same reason why I put my strap the way I do there. Um, just so that I'm always kind of working down the same side of the vehicle. Yep. And from this point here, I'm right in the back. This is where my bolt plugs are already. Grab your bolt plugs. I put them in. Now my boat's set up for safety. Oars are in, anchors on, bolt plugs are in. 
That's, nothing comes from anything but honesty, right? And so if you get all mucked up with ego and put all this bullshit and posturing, it doesn't. And we got a, a group of guys that sort of bought in, yeah, allowed to be vulnerable. You know, it's not like we're all crying and hugging and stuff, but it's like we're allowed to say, hey, I don't know this. Yeah. Hey, I, I you know, I don't feel comfortable here. And that's okay. Yeah. Right? And I, you could feel that the yeah, whole time. Totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Like, when I first had my meeting with Tim, he, I just told him, like, I'm here to learn how to teach this now. Like, yeah. And that was kind of my goal coming in. But, like, mm -hmm. man, my eyes were like this, and it turned into, like, a big... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it did. Yeah. It really did. And, like, so the client care part of it was huge, especially for me. Just, like you said, the little things. You can... You don't have to go out and do, like, crazy things, but you can just kind of put yourself up a little bit and... Yeah, just like the client-focused approach, like, I don't know, that really resonated with me. Cause mm -hmm. I know for myself getting into this, like, it's an intimidating thing to come at. So mm -hmm. just, yeah, right. show some appreciation, just get stoked with your clients and yeah. things will kind of go from there. So yeah. <laughs> seeing your grandkids on the banks in McKinnon, watching grandpa roll in on the on a drift boat, like that, like, That's pretty cool. it just choked yep. me up because I was like, that's so epic like here you know you're just coming into the launch and it's like the grandkids are there they yep. get to see like you don't understand what that's doing to them right now that inspires them to say if he's doing it i can do it like, oh yeah it's, it's, it's cool it, yes there's a lot of stuff that goes into you know daily routine and mm -hmm. it, it was fantastic these six days were the best six days of my life hands down <laughs> hands down wow. e each every single person has like something to give and it's their way to give and it was like perfect it was a perfect blend of technical versus you know eq versus you know learning on the water everything was just perfect like i i think i'm a better person i'm a better angler you know just in service of people so i this was a fantastic these clients that you don't know who they are sometimes and show up and okay Maybe you don't gel with them. Maybe they're not your type of people, but how can you adjust yeah. yourself to make their day fun, enjoyable, and everyone come off the water happy then, yeah. right? That was my my big thing. Was I did not expect at all was to be like, you gotta work on yourself as a person a little bit, right? That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a really cool point. See I'm the value? Um, you like sh you share it with joy and exuberance and optimism, yep. and and uh, you know it's 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 pervasive. It it, it yeah yeah so it's pretty good. Thanks. Yeah, like that is huge. Yeah, that's pretty like good. you have no idea what that means. It's good. Like yeah. coming from all you guys. Like I like I said to Dana and Quinn, I said this was like fantasy cap, <laughs> right? Like you're fishing with some of the brightest like most tuned in minds that don't just understand fly fishing they, you guys have a good handle on life right mm -hmm. like and i don't have time to go into all my shit but like i really need that mm -hmm. right now um it's good it's huge for me yeah. um it turned out fantastic and yeah changed my whole perspective on everything that's like, good there's a lot to it that's good and yeah. like really really good so much more appreciation to you guys and stuff like there's a lot more than like i ever really expected and stuff and it was just like it just changed everything like awesome yeah yeah and then definitely like at this is the day i was getting on like even talking to you and bruce i was just like no i was shitting my pants this morning but then i came over this like i yeah. just came a lot more comfortable and accepting yeah, of like you. being afraid of it yeah, yeah. good for and you. it just really worked out what a bunch of growth yeah that's that's that is Fantastic. As an instructor, that blows me away and I love it. It's Appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. Good for yeah. you. We went Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That yeah. first Monday, I like I had so much to do and I did nothing but go and clean up the boats and like just kind of process yeah. what had happened the last yeah. three days, right? Like um it was it's huge. Um the huge amount of knowledge to take in from you guys and like getting getting to talk to everybody and, and having having everybody be so open about that stuff because I mean that's something that's so that's so uh, not easy for everybody to access, I guess. You know what I mean? Um, it's, it's so proud just to see you just awesome. like, and then your growth was not that you were here and you're here. It's like you're here and you're here. And it's like, totally. it's only going to keep growing for you because A, like you said, I, I need, I want this. This is what I want to do. And yeah. you're, you're doing it. And it's like, now you're going to, 
do it even better and maybe more the right way or like 100%. not 22 hours a day and just like yep. and in your head you're like actually <laughs> yeah. this is viable like yep. mm, yeah the so one thing that i kind of mentioned the first interview was and it just like multiplied as we went it was like, it's about being a better person yeah, right. right it really is yeah. it's a be a better person school All right, all right, all right. Thanks, folks, yeah, for yeah. watching that video. That was pretty special. Yeah, I haven't watched that since basically we did it last spring, yeah. and I think it's super awesome for everybody to get a chance to share their experience, especially getting to spend time with everybody, and that was like in a weird, almost lockdown time, a yeah. re-lockdown. It was <laughs> close to not happening at times. It yeah. Just, it just worked out perfectly. Absolutely. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's Guide School. Reach out to us. Uh, it's happening in the spring. Details are on our website if you guys want. And Blake, you're 100% right. Those Uggs were super, super. <laughs> None <laughs> I, of us could quite handle I them. also had that same conversation with him. But uh, <laughs> uh, anyways, props to all the guys that are here Thursday Night Live and were in the Guide School and they got to share their stories. Uh, I, it's selfishly guide school is super cool for me because I get to spend time and grow myself, and I think that that's invaluable. Yeah, very special. Um, all right, all right, all right. So, <laughs> yes. yeah, anybody, um, reach out if you have questions. Nobody, uh, it's it it has a bunch of different faucets for different people, so uh, too much to talk about here. But personally, just reach out, send us an email, whatever, because we got to get to bingo. Because we got to give away some stuff. Give away some stuff. Yeah. So what are we giving away? What are we giving away? Well, let me just come over here to a little bit of me time. You time. Okay. So we got a lot of stickers. Lots of cool stickers. Not going to go through the stickers independently, but our friends at Drift Out was fly fishing. I just don't want to crush them all. But anyways, <laughs> guys, there's, there's a lot of stickers in here from Watermaster, uh, Drift Out West Fly Fishing and uh, Norvice. <laughs> These are kind of my favorite because uh, yeah. if you've ever been on a fishing trip with us, that right there is your torpedo sandwich. Yeah, yeah. And this here. Is the best part of the whole trip. Corey Mahan, who's here. Why don't you talk about this? <laughs> Corey, you can chime in and talk about the croissant. Anyways, guys, there's, there's a whole bunch of stickers. Uh, our friends... Our friends at Fish Pond jumped in and sent us a whole bunch of stuff uh, to do giveaways, yeah. Fish Pond stuff. So this huge sticker pack is coming your way. A uh, hat just like Tim Hepworth wearing from Watermaster, another one of our sponsors. So I'm going to open up the hat. I'm going to put all these stickers in so I don't lose, lose them. Lose any of them. Download your bingo cards. Download your bingo cards. Also from our friends at Fish Pond, this uh, beer koozie, oh, <laughs> whatever yeah. it is, from Fish Pond. $100 of fly tying material from our friends at Shore Fishing. Yeah. So we've got a bunch of stuff, duck oil gland. We've got some silver fox. We've got a bunch of threads. We've got partridge hooks we've got a bunch i can i can't see it all but it's it's a lot of stuff <laughs> so that's in there that's in there it's like a tickle trunk what's super cool nobody wants that <laughs> <laughs> you said you were gonna give it away well it just it just wrecks the prize it's true okay so this is really super cool from one of our friends at Heartworks Studio, Cheyenne Ryder Smith, also maybe Cheyenne Sturgeon now. She is married. She took guide school in the fall a year ago, and she is a potter. And she handcrafted these apps. This, this is worth the price of admission right here, folks. These are handcrafted, handmade, hand painted brown trout mugs. Okay, and they super. It, it's like, honestly, <laughs> I got some for Christmas. Yeah, that They're is good. super cool. 
And if you don't win tonight, there's, so there's two of them. We're giving this all away in the same thing. These are really cool. So if you want, she's on Instagram under Heartworks Studio. Send her a message and say you saw her mugs on Thursday Night Live because I think she has more that she is selling. Uh, because they're handcrafted, she had to mold them uh, put them in the kiln, paint them, glaze them. So a, a lot of, a lot of work goes into these, and whatever she sells them for is probably not uh, enough for what the time that goes into something like this. So the, these are it, um, and that's what we're gonna do here, folks. With that the is old quite thing. the giveaway. Called the bingo. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Okay, so what we do quickly in bingo is we get four calls right off the bat and you're gonna see them right there. Mm -hmm. So we just went through all the giveaways for the Bingo. The Flyingo Watermaster, this one is brought to us by our friends at Watermaster, okay? So we're gonna spend about two minutes, two minutes, what do we four, need? Corners. four corners. It <laughs> says right there, four corners. The four centers, maybe? Four corners and when you get Bingo, shout it out and say bingo four corners it says right there we'll pull up your card and we'll show you if you're a winner or not if there's a tie we have a tiebreaker we just enter your number on your bingo card and it does it for us on the system so the watermaster flying go the next call is silent bob we're looking for four corners folks you could win both of these epic mugs unless i steal them <laughs> And then you get this beer koozie. You get $100 in fly time material. You get a whole bunch of stickers from our friends at Watermaster. You also get one of their hats. Nice. Okay. Anybody call bingo yet? Zero for five. All right. <laughs> Foam is home stone. Foam is home stone. We're going to go quick. We're going to go quick here. We're going to go quick because we got to still tie a sparkle minnow. Foam <laughs> is home stone. The royal wolf. If, if none of these are on there, you don't have the only four more to go. Uh, Corey, you're not enjoying the chocolate croissant. You're, in, you're reaping the benefits of gifting the chocolate croissant. That's true. That's true. Maybe Corey will share more. Okay. Number eight is Devil Bug. Devil Bug. Devil Bug. Devil Bug. All right. Anybody? All right. Number nine is Pat's Plus. We're gonna go quick, folks. We are going quick. Over here at Bingo Land, we're going quick. Nine calls. Ooh. Simple scud. Ah, I did something a little different this week. I made it a little more difficult. What'd you do? When, <laughs> Juanita, that is almost the face you made when you received the <laughs> chocolate croissant. <laughs> oh, man. So the question for Juanita is, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Because I mean, <laughs> Did she eat the chocolate croissant first? <laughs> Choose not to answer. <laughs> okay. To. Looks like we got some spam from the YouTubes. Yeah. Tima Kuchum Vum Young. Vum Young. Okay, shop vac. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> when it's meant to be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. Does anybody have any corners? Is this going to yeah, be completely geez. gone south? Bingo, oh, oh, two. Gunner Cove. Bingo card. Chocolate first for sure. There it is. Shop vac is Gunner Cove. Gunner Cove. He's Gunner Cove's it. the winner. He's I believe it. he's won last year. I, I, cause it's not his real name. And uh, well, you're a lucky guy. You're a lucky guy. Gunner Cove is the winner, folks. Nice work. The Watermaster Flying Go. That's a that's one of the best ones because. Yeah. When you can win handcrafted things like this, which is pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool. I think that's Bruce, super cool. <laughs> Bruce called bingo as well. I don't know if he's in the running though. Uh, Bruce, Bruce, Bruce. Just up a little bit. Great. Okay, Bruce, send us your bingo card number and we'll find out. Who got it first? Nathaniel did too, so. Okay, so. Uh, write down. Nathaniel was 32. Okay, so we're going to have to go to the tiebreaker. We'll go tiebreaker. So, Gunner Cove. 
Uh, Gunner Cove, send us your. He did. It was O two. Yeah. Where's that? Zero zero two. Zero zero two. Okay, zero zero two. Bruce, send us your bingo card number. You know why Bruce got bingo? Because it was freaking Cause stickers. It's stickers. <laughs> <laughs> it's like his crack. Yeah. Wanita said the chocolate went first. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going through the comments here, guys, making sure. It's normal, Roger, because there's 30, there's 30 number or there's 30 names this time, and then I made a smaller card because last time um, we had too many ties, so I just tried to spread. It. Apparently, we have too many ties. Zero three five. Well, Bruce is on on. Uh, yeah, zero three five. Zero three is. five. The leg, the All Facebook right. leg. Let's see who got it first. Zero, three, five. Do we got everybody? I think so. I read everybody coming in. Okay, gotcha. Something. Yeah, something was different. We so we have more more names than we do on your card because we're trying to avoid this uh, tie problem. So many tie break. So, anyways, here we go, folks. You can oh. see it on the screen. O thirty two. O o two. I think it's Nathaniel, Bruce, and Gunner. Correct. Yep. All right. Here's the winner. Zero zero two, is that what it is? Oh three five. Oh three five. Bruce, so that was Bruce, Bruce call. Bruce hey, got it. You just so gunner no dude. You were not beating Bruce on stickers. Oh, you man. were never, Bruce. Well, that's fantastic well because done, Bruce. that's super cool, Bruce. You got a lot. Of, you got a lot of stickers, and I know truly, truly, these are going to a good home. So, you can reach out and thank Shay, uh, Heartwork Studios for that. Um, <laughs> That's it. That's that's how bingo goes down. That is how it goes. All well right. Done. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, zoom out your camera. A little bit. Okay. I'll give you a little a little preview here of what we're going to be tying up. That's how Brucey actually gets this shirt. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we are tying a sparkle minnow. So there's a couple versions of this fly. You could do it an articulated one or just a single hook. This one we're doing is a single hook guy. Um, if you go ahead and open up your kit, if you're tying with us, if not, go to your material list. Uh, not too many materials here. We got a couple different colors of sparkle dub. Um, so like, the, oh, sorry, I'm gonna grab this. So um, ice dub is what we're gonna be using that we put in your kits. You got a uh, this color, so we're calling it a uh, caddis green and then just a pearl. And then um, we're, <coughs> we're using a hook and a cone, and then a couple pieces of marabou and a little bit of flash. That's all we're gonna have in here. So let's go ahead and open up my kit. And let's get our hook and our cone out. Be careful again when you open it up because those kind of get messed in with your materials and you don't want to lose any of your stuff. So you can tie your second one as well. This kit is also giving me some issues, so just be careful as you open it up. There we go. Okay, so you should have three colors of marabou in there. Two for sure, let me open this up and make sure. So let's go ahead and start by uh, putting our, our hook and our cone together. So this sparkle stuff, guys, it's gonna end up everywhere. So if you wanna prevent that, just have a garbage nearby. But when you're, when you're placing, um, you take your cone, you wanna put it in the small side of the cone, let it flip over. Let's get that secured in our vise to start off that snug down so it's not going anywhere Make sure it's nice and level um, then we're gonna pull out we should have some marabou in here it's a lot of stuff going on it's gonna pull these kits apart and find um, Make sure you're going to have some, the, the big piece here to start with is, also let's talk about our thread because we didn't talk about that. I guess we did, but it's been a while. Um, so we're going to use for thread, we're going to use something a little bit heavier. It doesn't have to be crazy heavy, but something in the 6 aught range. I'm going to use a 140 um, UTC in like a brown color just because it's what I have on hand. Um, but the first so, thing So, yeah, just wait. Sorry. <clears throat> Question, do you, go ahead. Sorry, maybe I didn't hear your whole statement. No, I was just going to state about our marabou. We just need to make sure we're going to have kind of three genres of color here. We got a um, an olive, a little bit lighter, kind of creamy olive, and then a white. Okay, so that's how we're going to start with our marabou. Um, but let's first off, let's go ahead and grab our thread that we're talking about. What were you going to say? Do you have something to say? Uh, just want to make sure we get the questions because that's what's important. 
Jacob says, I was wondering being a new tire here. How is everyone, how's everyone store their materials? Oh yeah. Good question. Um, so, it's probably a full episode of question. Yeah, I mean, it could go into everything, but if I'm going to speak personally, um, my materials I store in, so let's say feather, like I like to organize them, but kind of weird that way, but I like things organized. So my feathers, I keep kind of specific feathers together, like schlappens together, my capes are together, my whatever's together. Um, but I go, I use everything from Ziploc bags for my original organization into big Tupperware um, kind of tubs or totes. And then I use like all my dubbings, my threads, everything like that are almost like little tackle boxes. Um, I used to bring, have to bring a lot of stuff here when we were tying and things were different. Um, but I, I use my tying at work, so it's important for me to travel with it. So it's a little different for me, but it's really good, especially if you're using um, natural products like feathers, furs, um, to, to zip lock them and keep them separate because there are things that can transmit across them, especially if you're using, let's say, some deer hide that you shot yourself in tanned or salted. You can have, you know, mites or flea or whatever. You just want to be able to keep everything separate. So it's good to zip lock everything separately and then use Tupperware. That's kind of what I do. It's interesting. And one of the reasons that we, uh, one of the reasons that we did this pre packaging stuff is because what happens is you'll, uh, as you get on your fly tying journey, you'll get so much material. You almost need a room the size of the studio to store it all. And how do you store it all? And then you find out you don't use all this stuff. So, um, like I think Roger said, check out fly tying spaces group on Facebook page. Um, there's a lot of good ideas, uh, because it, it is complicated, but it's, it's just kind of preference. And over time you're going to understand how you like to use stuff. Um, but yeah, again, it's like, it's like an entire episode we could do of organizing materials and beads and stuff. And the, and the more finicky you are about organizing that stuff, uh, probably the more fun tying is, which is like a fly key, yeah. table. <laughs> it's just knowing where your stuff is at all times. That's what makes Bob's it like Bob's in the house. Bob, 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 Bob. It's got a little girl uh, he just had. Now yeah, I know. Full house of ladies. It's a machine. <laughs> so... Yeah, organizing stuff is just like, it grows and hopefully you grow with it. Um, Big reason behind the sampler packs that come in your kits is so that you can decide this fly you're gonna love. So you're gonna wanna go on rockymountainflyshop.net and click on all their materials and buy a bunch because you're gonna be able to use these for other things. Uh, But yeah, Yeah. I guess I don't really know. Like, Organize. I don't have it figured out. So <laughs> if you could just see the table here, this table you can is see not the, a good representation. The, the drawers <laughs> outside of the studio here that are uh, a bit it's of a gong show. Okay, it's something. One okay. more question before you get going was about fishing this fly. Do you tie it weighted? Uh, do you fish it on a sinking liner tip? And I, I think good that question. goes to. Could go uh, a few ways, actually. I think I answered that like before, instead of saying, does this fly work on a bull trout? Let's think about the characteristics of the watershed. So if we're fishing very shallow water or very small creek, probably weighted and on a sinking line might be aggressive. If you're fishing out of a boat and you're in higher water up here, that would be early July. That could be good to get that fly uh, down super quick. If you're in a boat, you're hitting spots and moving quickly. So you want to get in down and hit your spot. Um, so I, I think the answer would be, what are the characteristics of where you're fishing? Yeah. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. Right. But is the, and the water, the volume and the current is Speed, it heavy and, and like, yeah. yeah. But what, what I'll show you is, uh, so we, we are tying this, we're going to say in a weighted version cause we're using a cone. You could add a lot of lead wrap to this too and make it even heavier. Um, I'm going to show you a little trick, although we didn't put it in your kit. I'm just going to show you because I think it's a valuable little thing to know. It doesn't require it at all. But sometimes when we're tying and we're finishing off this fly, this this uh, cone, because it's kind of free moving, there's nothing holding it in there, it can be a little tough um, to, to kind of get into place at the end. So I'm just going to show you. I just took a simple little um, size O2O lead wire. I'm just going to take a handful of wraps. And this isn't for weight purposes. I'm just going to show you this because I want you to see how it can work in holding your cone in place. Again, go grab your buddy scissors. You can trim that out. Make sure that those wraps are down. And then you just take that and slide it forward. So I can kind of center that that cone. And then with those lead wraps in there, 
I can take and turn it to where I want it and it's likely gonna stay there. That's a little, that's a little trick, even if you're not, you're not hoping to add extra weight, that right there can just kind of make it your life a little easier at the end. So just thought I'd show you that. Let's go ahead and grab our thread here, guys. So we're gonna, uh, like I said before, I'm using a, uh, a brown colored uh, 140 denier UTC. Use something in the six saw, it's something a little heavier, it doesn't need to be super heavy, but you don't wanna break your thread either on this one. So what I do is I'm gonna start by taking my thread all the way back to the hook bend. And go in here with my good scissors, trim out my tag. Now my good scissors. <laughs> not his scissors. Not my scissors. <laughs> the ones I already ruined. So like I said, you got those three colors of um, Marabou. So what I'll say is in these kits, guys, you're likely gonna get one good fly out of this package. Um, it's really hard to judge the amount of materials for this fly just because it is, uh, it's hard. There's a lot of ice stuff you stuff need. So you may have to grab an extra pair of Marabou or something from your stuff. But if not, you're definitely gonna get one full fly out of this. Um, what I'm gonna do, you can either lick, lick the marabou or you can lick your fingers and touch the marabou or whatever you or want to I do. I could have made you a lick it. You could have made me a lick I it. But you didn't. But you didn't. So I like to take that just so it gives me a real good idea of where the tips are and where they're going to be. Now what I want to do is I want to go roughly a hook length. So if I measure off my hook, I'm going to take that and I'm going to set it here. And how we tie this in is actually going to stack the marabou. Um, so we're going to go white on the bottom because most minnow bellies are white on the bottom. Then we're going to go with our medium colored kind of creamish olive and then we're going to go olive on top. So I'm going to switch my hand over. I'm going to take a nice firm wrap and get that down. And then I'm going to take a few thread wraps forward because as I go, I want to kind of create a, uh, a little bit of a tapered underbody on this guy. So you're going to notice on each of these marabou that I put in, I'm going to kind of work my way forward a little bit just so that I can secure them down really well and to kind of fix that underbody. That's sliding on me. There we go. Come back. Now we're going to add in our next one. So I'm going to go with a little bit lighter, kind of creamy, olivey color. Same thing. Add a little bit of moisture to it so I can see. And now we want to keep this the exact same length as the other guy and set it right on top. And then as this dries, it's going to really kind of puff up and plume really nice. But the reason I tied it in this way is because I want it to be perfectly stacked on top of each other. It's going to give some depth and kind of variation in our scheme here. I just gotta tighten up my vise. For some reason, that is loose. If I can find the right Allen key here. Yeah, uh, it's probably in front of the far. In front of the far. Hang tight, Tim, I'm coming to your rescue. Save me. Look, and there it is, I got it. All right. <laughs> what is this? It's your Jesus. Uh, it's Jesus. Jesus. Okay, now we've saved the vise, let's go ahead. Wrap forward a little bit. Again, we're just kind of tapering that underbody by adding um, that mirror before. You know what would make my night? If what Blake would? if Blake sent a message on the comments and said, Dana, great job on the music. It'd make my night. I, I don't think you're going to get it. I Blake, don't, don't give it to him, man. Don't give him it. I just was thinking, hey, <laughs> what if? What if? Last one here, guys. We're going to go to our olive. Now, these are just blood quills, so they're not super big. They're just... Um, there's a couple different kinds of marabou, but this is what we would call a blood quill. Gives you really nice even tips, not something we want to palmer up or anything like that. So it's it's just a, an all around good marabou. Now we're going to set this guy right on top, making sure we keep a fairly even tips. Put that down, make sure it's locked in at the butt. And we're going to go, so, go forward. So the cool thing about this pattern is <clears throat> you can tie this in what we would call an articulator version which virtually all you do is you tie the, the fly twice. You tie one at the back, add a little piece of bead and some wire in between, and then tie it again up front. And all that does is it just increases the size of the fly and the, and the overall profile. Um, we fish a lot of both. There's a lot of good times to fish, um, to fish an articulated one, if you're maybe fishing a single fly, but we, we fish a lot of double flies. We like to fish like maybe a, a woolly bugger or a bow river bugger behind something like this. It's got some weight or vice versa. Um, so it's nice to also just have the sick, the singular hook fly. Okay. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go and we're going to build a dubbing loop. We've talked about this in, in previous uh, episodes. Oh, actually that's not true. I'm going to pause See, you there. Blake, he, he almost, he almost gave me the compliment. Almost. Oh. We said Dana Farrell. I think he's talking about my dad, Will. Ah. Uh. Dana Chaz, but Chaz is there. Everyone needs a Chaz. <laughs> Chaz got my back. Dana's got great music. It's the truth. Sorry, guys. Before we move forward, we're going to go and put our flash in the tail. So we gave you some strands of this. This is one full strand. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take and even up the tips. Once I got so the, I'm the pretty sure your in. hands are full and I'm going to have to grab my own beer. Yeah, I, 
can get you one. I got it. Oh, look at you. I got you, bro. Look at you. I'm sure I got a frozen beer in here. Now it's your turn. They're all the same. So Thanks, Brent. Yeah, hey, you're welcome. Brent Struthers for the beer delivery. For the beer delivery. So I've evened up my tips. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my scissors mm. down this. There it is. My night's made. Blake did it. Oh, he did it? Great. Yeah, I almost want to bring that comment up on the screen. <laughs> you might have to. I did. Look at that. I don't bring comments <laughs> up on the screen till the end. <laughs> But there that's it a special is. thing for me. That's what I need you guys to know. I don't know how to get it off the screen. Oh, that's fine. It can hang out there. <sighs> it's important. So, guys, um, now I've just basically got two strands. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... It disappeared. And it doesn't matter if they're too long because I'm going to trim them out. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set two on the far side of the fly. I'm going to secure those down. And then I'm going to bring the other two towards the near side of the fly, and I'm going to secure them down. So, we basically have flash on both sides. Um, going straight back over and then I'm gonna pull them out and I'm gonna trim them off just beyond the marabou because they're gonna retract just slightly so there we go now we got just a little bit of flash we're not trying to overdo it in the flash department we just want enough to to create a little bit of sparkle by the lack of pizza I'm assuming no one got us a pizza thanks a lot guys <laughs> I'm literally my stomach's grumbling right now thinking well. about the pizza Janine's probably still watching because she watches the whole episode yeah, all the, the time and ties yeah. with us. So well, she's tying upstairs, definitely. Tim would like a pizza. Pizza, please. Okay. We're going to build a dubbing loop back to what I was going to do originally. Okay, so a dubbing loop, we've done this before. Um, <laughs> Wait, you can't, you can't negate Blake's comments. I got you a countryman, Mike. I'll send it tomorrow. I'll do anything to get close to Tim's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> One day, folks. Blake can never come here. It's going to yeah, be a problem. <laughs> and you're guiding me and Blake. Oh, yes. Remember, I'll do it. I've done it before for You've you and, for me. and one of our good friends. I'll guide you and Blake all day. You will guide me and Blake. But I choose the music. <laughs> and the position. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those scissors, Chaz? Is that what you're looking at? Yeah. <laughs> okay, dubbing loop. So what I'm going to do is I've pulled out a little bit of thread. Okay, like so I've got... This dubbing loop is going to be about four inches, okay? I'm gonna, and that's four inches, four inches. I'm gonna stick two fingers on that four inch thread. Blake also asked earlier, <laughs> he said, does, Tim, does your, does your wife let you touch her with those hands? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally. <laughs> okay, stop distracting me, let's get to this fly. Okay, so I got two fingers. I'm gonna fold the thread over. So I, I literally just tuck my fingers on there, folding it over, I'm gonna slide. Um, and bring my bobbin back to the fly itself. And now that it's here, you can see I've got a, a little loop in my fingers and this crossed over right here. Now what I need to do is go underneath the fly and wrap it around once, twice, around that loop that I created in the thread. That's my dubbing loop. And then when I bring my thread back up, I'm gonna wrap it so that that dubbing loop can't move forward until I'm ready for it to move forward, okay? That's the key here. And I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna wrap it forward to right behind um, the cone, I'm going to put, oh, broken thread. Can you believe it? Wait, wait. Oh my gosh. Wait, it's okay. Do I have to go to something else? I don't have anything else. No big deal. To, do I have to go to me and tell a joke? No, I'm good. I just grabbed another Look at bobbin. you, Cammy. So, <laughs> so folks, if bobbins aren't the issue, have multiple just ones. Just have more bobbins. You're just ready to go. Look Case. at that. Look at you. Cam needs to take a lesson. Yes, he does. Okay, so i got some other thread on there. The edge of those cones, I think, are pretty sharp because I've I don't cut my throat a few I times. I don't know today. if Blake knows that I have a microphone fetish. He does. It's a weird thing. It's true. And not because of the shape of them. <laughs> Way too big. Okay, so I'm going to grab my um, dubbing spinner. So any, there's lots of different types. This is a loon one. I'm going to grab the hook and put it in my dubbing spinner like so. You could use a little bit of wax here, but it's not necessary for what we're doing. I'm going to let that just hang um, for now. So you're gonna, you're just gonna be literally hanging down here. I'm gonna grab the first color that we're gonna work with is gonna be that caddis green sparkle dub. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to grab it, and we're gonna use quite a bit of it. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna pull it apart, pull apart and stack, pull apart and stack. We're basically just elongating those fibers so that when we go to put this in and brush it out, it makes it nice and full. So once I've kind of done that, I'm gonna have a fairly big stack in my hand. Okay. So I pulled it apart, pulled it apart, stacked it on top. And now I'm going to take and split that loop that I made. I'm going to open up that split so you can see. I'll move my hand out of the way. So I've just taken and opened it up. And I'm going to set that dubbing material. And it's important that you get this right up tight to the fly and let it fall. Okay. 
So, so Sean like doesn't have a dubbing spinner, and he wants to know if he can have yours. That's, um, that's mine, isn't if it? If you bring me some jerky. That's a good point. We'll trade you scissors for jerky. I'll trade you another poster for jerky. I'll, I'll steal it from I'll Joel. Trade, I'll <laughs> trade you a white fish for a jerky. <laughs> Any day. Any day. So if you don't have a dubbing spinner, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop will hook you up. But I tell you what, folks, people have tried. I'm talking about myself. I've tried to make it work without one for a long time, and it is a game changer when you get one. Yeah, it's it's no. one of those essential tools. It's right up there with a, you know a whip finish and anything else. You gotta have. Yeah, you gotta have it. So the, the and this is a super simple one. It's just a, literally like a little bell. And so what I do then is I take my finger and I set it right below all that dubbing material that I put in. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin it. Okay, so you can see me spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it. What you're gonna see is all that material starts to, we call it cord up. And once we get a nice little rope of it, if you spin too much, you'll break your thread. So it is a bit of a fine line. But once you get it nice and tight, so that it's, it's, it's we, like we say, it would rope up. Um, I'm gonna go in here and kind of just before I do my palm ring of this, I gotta find my dubbing brush here. So I just got this little so dubbing brush. So Bruce says, why is all the material spinning on the shank? Well, there's two folds. You could have put a not enough of a thread wrap below it, or you're not, you haven't tightened it. What was the question? Well, so like he's probably turning and his marabou spinning. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So it's just on the shank, and he, and he didn't do a thread wrap underneath or like... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bruce Cameron. Just the the vodka. Yeah, it's a, great, it's a great point, Matt. Some guys, what they do, that's, that's another way you can do it if you don't have a dubbing tool, is if you're using a big enough thread like a 140 or a 6-0, you can take a bodkin, and you can actually go in there, um, and you, you spin your bobbin until you, it looks like the thread flattens out. And you take a bodkin and you split that thread, you open it up and you put the, the dubbing in between it. Um, and then instead of spinning your dubbing tool, you just gotta spin your bobbin and technically then it cords it up. Um, only downside of doing that is you've really weakened. Um, you have very little strength in the thread that you've used because you've actually split a 140 into two pieces instead of doubling over a 140. Uh, so it, it, it just is a weaker, and I find that I've broken more thread that way and broken your dubbing loop, which is really a pain in the butt. Um, so I prefer not to do it that way, but that's just me. But you, great point. That is definitely how some people do it. Um, okay, so now that I got this nice and corded up, I'm gonna take just a little dubbing brush. You could use a toothbrush. You could use whatever. This is I don't even know what this one is. I think this is a stone foe or something. Anyways, it's got like a toothbrush on one side, a little bit more of a coarse brush on the other. I'm just gonna take that toothbrush side and I'm gonna start working that dubbing out. We just call it teasing it. You're just gonna tease some of that dubbing out. You don't want to do it too much because you don't want to pull all the dubbing out of it but you, you wanna loosen up some of that material so that when you go to wrap this forward and palmer it, you got some loose material to work with because we're gonna wanna take it and uh, brush it back at the end. So now I've, I've teased some of it out. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna use my rotary vise because I got one, and I'm just gonna start wrapping forward. Okay, so I wanna cover, we're gonna call this palmering it. We're gonna cover up the hook shank all the way forward to right behind the bead. Gonna take one extra wrap. You don't wanna overdo it because if it's too tight up at the front, it already looks kinda big and poofy. Um, you won't you won't get a good finish here. So I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna go in front and behind. Move that cone a bit so it's center again. Once I feel like I got some good thread wraps in there, it's not gonna go anywhere. Then I can feel free to go in and cut that out. Make sure you have it secured before you cut it. Otherwise, you're gonna be very disappointed in yourself. You're gonna lose all that work you just did. And if you did it properly, you shouldn't have too much left over. Just a little bit. I'm gonna get that out of the way. Um, I'm gonna brush, or I'm gonna take a few more thread wraps. I'm gonna throw a half hitch in here because I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna start brushing some of this out. Set my bobbin to the side. Now what I wanna do is I really wanna work up all, all this dubbing. Kind of almost brushing it forward. We'll brush it back here in just a moment. But you really wanna tease it up real good. Tease and it. Tease it. Tease it real good. And then take it and start brushing it rearward, okay? So we want all of that ice dub to actually move and look like it's flowing backwards. So I've gone around and you can see in it, it, it looks bulky guys, but these ice or these uh, sparkle windows are meant to have a ton of flash. It's literally just a flash fly. So it's okay and it builds a nice profile for us too. So then what I wanna do is I wanna flip it upside down and I wanna take and almost like I'm parting the hair on this. You can use your fingers or you can use your brush and pull that back so it's almost bare on the bottom. Bare, bo bare, bare bottom. Bare bottom. So you can see it. You can see right down to almost the hook and all the under stuff here. 
Um, that's because now what I'm going to do is... The shaft. You can see down to the shaft. The shaft. Is I'm going to take some of that... Shaft. Pearl is, that, is that a movie? Um, oh, what's his name? Shaft. Every time they kept saying, Shaft. I don't know what movies are. Anyone watching. know what that movie is? It was Shaft. It was with... Uh, oh, what was his name? I'll think about it. You keep time flies. I'll Google it. It's probably from the 80s. I wouldn't know it. That so was all from the is, 2000s and 20s. <laughs> is I've grabbed a pinch of my pearl ice dub now. A fairly good pinch. And I've basically gone right in, in the middle of it. And found like that midpoint. Okay. I'm, I'm pulling Shaft it back. Shaft is like a so. 2019 American action comedy film. Oh. Just, just I'll get back just to you cause, on that. Just because. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this right in front of the bead. Okay. But I want it, it's important that it stays on the bottom of the fly. Bring my thread back to me. I'm gonna tie that in right there. Make sure it stays right on the bottom. Because again, as we said before, oh, I broke two threads in the same night. <laughs> I am on a freaking roll. <laughs> what I know. What did Cam make out of my threads here? I I, uh, you... pull, I pulled them out 100 yards oh, and then man. burnt them. You would. See, everybody knows it's Samuel L. Jackson in a movie called Shaft. I don't, I don't know the movie, but I'll have to watch it now. Good. So now that I've saved that situation, Shaft. Always, always have some bobbins available. I want that white to stay right on the bottom. Okay. So I've got a few thread wraps on it. Now I'm going to pull the front and stroke that back too, and take a few thread wraps on top of it. Shaft. If you're wondering what I saved my butt with, I went and grabbed my nano thread. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take. Cam's a super proud of you. Is he? Yeah, he should be. A few thread wraps to secure that down so it's not going anywhere. And once I have that to where I'm happy, I got all that white on the bottom, green on top. Got my thread wraps in. I'm gonna go real quick here, and I'm going to find my whip finish tool, which seems to have flown away. There it is. I'm going to put that on. I'm gonna do a three or four turn whip finish. Make sure that's good and secured. Go ahead, clip that out. You can put a little, a little bit of resin on there if you'd like. I don't, I don't really see an overly uh, huge need at the moment. Uh, I wanna then take and pull, make sure I can clear the hook of uh, all that pearl ice up we put on the bottom. You can comb it back, make sure it looks nice and pretty. Flip it over, comb the top, make it sure it's going rearward too. You got any extras there? And that, my friends, is the sparkle minnow. So Matt says the fly consistently looks like it's putting on winter weight. Something maybe Tim should consider doing. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Who said that? Oh, Matt. Oh, Matt. Bro, I have tried to put on weight my whole life. It ain't going to start now. <laughs> Would this fly work for walleye? Definitely. Yeah, Actually, probably. I've caught walleye on this yeah, fly yeah. in the red yeah. deer. Yeah. They probably they do eat anything. Yes, that's a fact. Slow retrieve minnow. Epic tunes. There you have it, boys. That is a sparkle minnow. Do it in varying colors. Another really popular one is the golden white. So gold on top, white on the bottom. Kind of looks like a sucker or a brown trout or something. Olive is always a great go-to. Yeah, that's um, a good point. A couple sizes. This is a little bit smaller one. This is probably like what I don't know, like an eight or a six. Um, definitely push these up to even like a size two or bigger on a single hook. Uh, a long shaft. And then, and then articulate. Shaft. Shaft. You just don't know. It's I don't not know. funny. I can't, I can't. It's not funny, like, but this guy is just chirping. Chirping, 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 chirp. But yeah, that's that's a substantial fly. Yeah. On the Bow River. It's one you don't want to ignore. Yeah. One of the go-tos. That's a good point. So everybody, you got any questions about the last two flies that we've showed you? We're just a slightly over our two-hour time slot. But we did it. We got the fly done. We did it. E for us. So, Jeff, uh, why we play the crappy music we play is because we cannot play any copyright music or the stream will get shut down. That is a Facebook thing. So we have to use this free-ish type music. So uh, would that is an easier way to do the bottom white than doing a second dub and lip, which you figured out earlier. Yeah, I've Trout. done it both ways, and I just I don't I don't love the way that the original one's done, which is two dubbing loops. It's complicated, and it yeah actually falls apart more. So yeah, so 
Doug and his bad jokes are back. And he asks, what is the difference between in-laws and outlaws? <laughs> Do tell. Do tell. Doug, I would say... Weird, getting spammed yeah. today off the old... Yeah, I had the YouTube. Just a spam a jam. So the difference between... This is up for Doug's bad jokes. The difference between in-laws and outlaws. The outlaws are one. <laughs> That's good. I like it. That's a winner. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, you're right. Those are dumb rules. Yeah, oh, kind of like it. Going to tie up a few. Yes, absolutely, Ron. It's it's super fun. And, and where we are, and I think in a lot of places, it's super effective. It is a, I, I think there's the element of movement, flash, and bulk. Um, but also remember, guys, when fishing streamers, it's not the. It, there's a lot to do with you, and how you twitch and retrieve, how you have a sink tip, a floating line, uh, how you effectively fish. Personally, just a little caveat here. My least favorite thing to guide is a streamer fisherman because I feel that most people give about 40% effort when it comes to streamer fishing. Um, uh, it's not a personal attack on anybody. It is just, it's just a fact. And we know so, it ourselves though. We go to streamer fish and we last a couple hours. And yeah. we're like, that's not fun anymore. And then we know we're done because you know the level of effort you got to put in to make those flies work. So great pattern. But if it's not fished effectively, then uh, you might as well just go back to bobbers. Yeah. Uh, Scott Williams, it's great to have yeah. you back. Back, dude. It's great to have you back. He's been training his puppy on Thursdays and he's back on the YouTube. Nice. Yeah, good profile, good movement, all the good things. In laws are a life sentence. That's, <laughs> <coughs> that's good. So, what I want to do right before we jump into the best part of the night, I think, Dim, do you have anything else? Do you guys have anything else to add about the, uh, yeah, well, Cam fishing, streamer fishing with Cam, he just. It's intense. Yeah, duck. Uh, Jeff, it is hard to streamer fish out of the boat, but I think when you figure out like the kind of the, the when you turn the corner and all of a sudden it starts to feel easy, it's super effective. Mm -hmm. um, I personally don't like streamer fishing walking wade because I'm like, how do I do this? Because again, remember, guys, we're thinking from the fly back. How do you, where do you hit, like, I don't know if you saw in the guide school video, there was a short clip that said streamer uh, 3D fishing. One of the things we teach about guide school is about what your flies are doing. Because when you take clients, you want to teach them about the, what we call flies uh, back to the drift boat. So yeah, it is a lot of fun once you kind of get it in a drift boat, but you're right. Uh, it is really hard uh, to start with. Yeah, super tough. Uh, yeah, Matt, probably the most uh, complicated flies I've ever made only because their size is just pike flies, thick pike fly streamers, lots just of material. a lot of material. A lot, I mean, you're tying flies that are 14, 16 inches long. Complicated, but super complicated, but simple, if that makes any sense, because it's all well, a just a scale. lot. Yeah, it's just a lot yeah. of stuff. But yeah, we tied a few of those a couple years ago on some episodes too, so. Yeah. Do you guys think I should do ASMR? You know, like you go on TikTok and there's like 40,000 people watching some chick just like. Yeah, you just got to show your feet sometimes. No, it's not. Feet? <laughs> <laughs> it's. I haven't seen those ones. No? Okay. Then. Okay. What I want to show you guys is right before we jump in here, if you're, if you've had enough of us, then that's time to peace out. The flies are done, but the good part is just beginning. So if you go over Rocky Mountain Fly Shop and you click on Thursday night live and you go to the materials no nope, that's the wrong link you can buy those if you want there that's our uh, okay I'm trying to see okay so we got okay so let's go back to episode one uh, like that they have all the stuff we have but you can also go here and click on shop materials and you can purchase all the stuff, guys. If you love the flies tonight, you head over there 
you can get the threads, the hooks, the wires, whatever, whatever we used. You guys can head over to Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Uh, Colin's worked really hard at getting that all set up, so it's all right there for you guys. So super simple, RockyMountainFlyShop.net, Thursday Night Live Fly Time, and uh, that's there Silent Bob Streamer. That's the first fly we tied that everybody hated. <laughs> I like that fly. So uh, hard to make musky flies that are not too bulky. The musky and pike, very similar flies, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the key is less less is more, but a lot. A lot of materials, lots of steps. Uh, good hooks are... Uh, A-Rex makes good hooks. Really good hooks. Yeah. Uh, you like fire hole. I like fire hole. Partridge. Partridge is good. I think A-Rex are really good. Yeah. Daiichi is good. Yeah. Gami, Gamagatsu, Gamagatsu makes one of my very good. Hooks. I think yeah, everybody is kind of will get into the line of hooks that they like and they kind of stick with them, but I like to dabble yeah. lots of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's it, folks. That's the fly fishing part of the night. Hmm. And so this part of the night, if you're new here, perhaps you're like, oh my goodness, what is this? Dana's got half a beer left. <laughs> so this is a pretty cool part of the night where if you're still around, just checking it out here, which almost everybody is, almost nobody left, is that we are here to just be a, a cool place to share our wins because we haven't seen you guys for a couple weeks. More importantly, because for the past two years, it has been a debauchery out there in the world and I feel like everywhere you look it is just fear porn uh, media all this stuff is to just make us all feel crappy and so what we thought is hey let's have a little place for us to share about our wins so what I want to share with you guys first can you read this can anybody read this you read my shirt or is it backwards i don't know if the screen flips it if you can read it just type it in the comments because i'll tell you where i got it from because i th i saw this a couple weeks ago and it was like wow what a game changer uh just waiting to see on the comments here but you guys feel free to share your wins and we'll post them up here so Troy was right, it was under the tree. Oh yeah. Okay, Bags got it. Okay, this folks, this is game changer. Write it down somewhere, somewhere, write it down, put it on a post-it note, even bigger, somewhere that you can see it every single day. Because just like the world and the fear porn that exists, everybody says, oh, careful, hurt people, hurt people. Well, to me, that's, that's a negative approach on humans. And so I saw this shirt. So if you go on Instagram, there's a guy. His name is A Soul Called Joel. A Soul Called Joel. Check him out on Instagram. And he's, he just instantly was, pe actually I saw him on TikTok. And uh, he said he's willing to come on the show. So we might have him on here sooner than later. He sings, he's whatever. And he creates these shirts that says, healed people, heal people. So I thought, wow. That's pretty cool if we think about it the other way around. Instead of hurt people, hurt people. How about healed people, heal people? And that's a little more positivity in the whole entire thing. So that kind of parlays with this. What is your win? So a place for you and I and Tim to share some wins. So Tim, mm. the floor is yours. The floor is mine. <sighs> um... A little bit of vulnerability, I guess, tonight for me. Um, and I, I hope that you guys can feel this place is that way for you guys too. And, and some of my win tonight is actually is a hard one. Um, I've been dealing with a lot of a lot of stuff in my family for the last few months. A uh, big part of being the brother or having a brother who's an addict. And we've been through a lot of pain in the last few months. And uh, today of all days, we got loaded with a bunch more stuff. Um, and I. 
is crazy, but all I could think of was coming downstairs and giving you a hug, man. Like, uh -huh. so I came downstairs today, and uh, you know, when you, you have someone in your life you can turn to no matter what, and uh, you know, just being able to talk with Dana, give him a hug, and knowing that tonight I had to come in, recenter my mind to what was going on today. And uh, it brought me a lot of joy, and I can say for up until this second when I was trying to think of my win and knowing that this is actually what it is, um, I didn't have to think about it. So, yeah, it's true. <laughs> you know, it's, <coughs> but I hope in, in sharing that you guys know that this place is safe for all of us, no matter good or bad, and hopefully together and like the same friendship me and Dana share, we share with you that you can turn to each other because um, times are tough, but times are easier with friends. Um, with yeah. other people. It's, it's, it's powerful that there's a place here and I know a lot of people have reached out over Christmas and they've shared with me how important this little segment of the show is. A lot of people can, can leave their, the fly tines over. Um, but like just as much as you guys look forward to Thursdays, we look forward to Thursdays because, uh, in the summer, me and Tim get to see each other every day. We guide together. But all of a sudden the winter happens and time apart is more frequent. And so just getting to sit here and hang out with, it's lonely. Like I get lonely in the winters, like super lonely. And so just to be able to hang out with everybody like this, whether it's virtually hearing about your guys' successes and your wins um, is pretty awesome. So my win, and I don't know if Joel and Alicia are here because they're driving, I think back to North Dakota. But uh, Steady Neck, who watches all the time, uh, I don't know Alicia's Instagram handle, but I think they watch under Joel's account. Uh, they've been here since day one, pretty much. We've seen them yes, at Caravel. Days. They showed up. And uh, anyways, what's super cool is yesterday, uh, Janine and I, we got to go for a meeting with them. Uh, they got engaged and they're getting married in September. So uh, they inquired with us about being. Uh, my wife's a. She wow. Kill me. <laughs> Janine, Janine's a wedding <laughs> photographer, and we shoot weddings together. So uh, we met with them about their shooting their wedding, and it was super cool because Janine uh, passed over the form that they filled out, and it said, "How did you hear about us?" And it said Thursday Night Live flight, uh, <laughs> and I was so like, awesome. "That's what it's all about." So yeah, we. I got to show them to Janine and I was like, man, they're super awesome people and you're going to love them. And we left here and she's like, OQP is exactly what it means for the people who hang out with you guys on Thursday Night Live. So yeah, anyways, that's my win for the week. And uh, every time I get to meet you guys that uh, comment or hang out here, um, it's powerful. So uh, come to Calgary, come for a beer, come up to Olds, whatever you got to do. It's where I got to meet Brent for the first time as he came and picked up <laughs> his kid and some of the other guys. So let's get back to your guys' wins um, here for the end of the night. Uh, Jacob's dad's eye surgery went awesome today. Uh no one is Christmas, New Year's, family, friends. Everybody's healthy and on a Zoom Christmas. TNL back in effect. And everybody here online rocks. Mm. All big wins. Yeah, that's um, the best part. I, I already shared this. Scott said your authenticity is contagious and motivating. So the thing with that is like we get absolutely throttled on, on social media. There's a group that has fun making fun of us. And I think it's awesome because it just feels us. Uh, to create more of a space because darkness cannot put out light. Light continues to put out darkness. Um, so Scott, welcome here. And we hope that you find it a safe place to just talk about whatever. Uh, you might as well read Joe's here. Joe says he's thankful to, to wish my grandmother her 90th birthday despite her being in our nursing home this past weekend. That's great. That's awesome. Almost Betty years. White. 90 years. Ron is uh, paying it forward this week. Bless you all. Ron, good for you. That's awesome, Ron. Thanks, Trout. That's a yeah. powerful message from Trout. Tough one, but true. Yeah. Mr. Roger Beatty, big win. My youngest daughter was in a pretty rough accident last night. 
got rear-ended by a guy not paying attention. Her car is totaled, but she is, only has a small bruise on her knees. Uh, it's a big blessing, man. I'm glad she's okay. Uh, wow. That's a kind word, guys. Craig says his win of the week is back to work on Monday. His health, this evening of time and fellowship, and finally, everyone's openness to be an ear to bend, especially Dana. Have a great rest of your week and weekend, folks. Mm. Kenny Bob. My win is the TNL family. I reached out to a few guys for help on flies. Guys were overly willing to help with everything. Even got out fishing with one of them. This is actually a family here. Mm. Thanks for everyone. Best of luck, Tim. Man, that's so powerful. It is a family, but Kenny, like, truly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that that's actually... Thanks for those words, guys. Oh, Joel is here, yes. Yeah, he, is. he made it to Saskatoon. To his, I think your grandma's or someone's grandma was there. Yes, that that was cool. Touche. <laughs> Janine did hear it. Uh, <laughs> She's watching. She finds she. Where's the pizza? I told you she, yeah. Okay, wait. I said that to see if you're watching. That's called clickbait. Yeah. Wife. Woohoo. <laughs> yeah. All right, folks. Literally Pre clickbait. Pressure's on. Joel, Jordan, one of our guides, Jordan Jones, just yeah, got engaged. Got engaged this weekend. Absolutely awesome. So cool. Bruce, you might as well read that one. Holidays filled with family, some we haven't seen since before the insanity started. Refreshed, recharged, and ready for 2022. Bring it on. Heck yeah. Totally. Mike says his win was his four-year-old saying that he really wants to learn how to fly fish as he was watching fly fishing videos on his iPad. Looks like he might need a fly rod for his birthday in March. Well, I highly Absolutely. recommend the Echo Gecko. Yeah. Great rod. Great rod for kids. And if you're doing a film and no one catches fish, pull out the echo yeah. gecko. <laughs> <laughs> no word of a lie. Barry. Mr. Barry. My win for the last three weeks happened to go back and listen and watch FFBR DNL on YouTube. 68 oh, wow. episodes. Wow. Just, just so you great. guys know, Barry, who is in the guide school video, is one of the legit OGs for Thursday Night Live. One of literally the three. <laughs> Literally, there was like three people that watched the first year, and Barry was one of them. Yeah. Absolutely. Mr. Mike says, I have prostate cancer surgery coming up. My win is that it has been rescheduled to, to fit this week in March, which now means I can attend our GRTU Trout Fest in February. My favorite event. Oh, well, that's awesome. Wish you all the best, Mike. Hope it goes well. Tim, I'm in recovery and I slip from time to time. We're very selfish people and can be the most given when we're sober. Keep loving him. Be it has to be tough love. It's the only way. We're mini tornadoes and we affect everyone around us. Love you, man. Hmm. Thanks, bud. Second win for the week is ice is in around my house. Not sure if that's ice fishing or skating. <laughs> ice for fishing. <laughs> that's good. Sean, my daughter's win is staying up late right now, but she actually said spending Christmas with her Oma. Didn't see her for about that's freaking awesome. That's cool. So cool. Thanks, Carl. Bruce. Yeah. Bingo <laughs> stickers. <laughs> my win. Binge watching season one of two is Yellowstone. Who knew you could fly fish, fish yeah. on horseback, right? But keep watching, Bruce. Keep and dress better. up next week. It's Yellowstone next week, folks. Huh. Win of the week has been that both Alice and I are on the men from COVID that truly really kicked our butts. Got to go out and catch some cool bird trout before getting sick, and Allison caught the bigger fish. Yeah, that's awesome. It looks like Mr. Uh, Mrs. Prostate Jim. Survivor. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, Mike McKenna, that's for you. Yeah. Mr. Jen Lyle, my win, I was baptized this last summer and began the journey of having a louder faith. I recently started a Bible study with Pastor Rob Hall, and thank you, Rob, for walking this beautiful path with me. I love you all, and God bless you all. I'll pray for you. It's powerful, man. Really, really awesome to see him on that journey. Yeah, and I got to be there. And... Just if you wonder why we're calling him a he, Jen is, 
He uses his wife's account. <laughs> Joe says, that's awesome. I'd be happy to donate towards a rod for his birthday. Oh, that's awesome. So that's what, this is actually a family that I'm not going to, like, that's almost a t-shirt. It is. <laughs> it is. Oh, bags. My win. Been working my butt <laughs> off to get ahead. Didn't take off as much time as I would have liked over Christmas. But finally getting somewhere. Very thankful for the ability to be able to get ahead. Hmm. Huge win for Scott this week. Being back home with the boys and finding this wicked new group of friends. First timer from BC. Oh. Oh, that's awesome, Scott. Glad you found us. <laughs> Fasten your seatbelt, Scott. <laughs> this is a lot of fun and things sometimes get weird. <laughs> Somebody said... It's an acquired taste, yeah, and I'm true. proud of that. <laughs> Ready when yeah, you are, baby. <laughs> uh, stay on them, Janine. Yeah, stay on them. This is a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I mean, but yes. So this, I want to read this one. Working on a big win with Dana, forming a plan to get up there this summer for the friendships and the fishing. From yeah. Colorado, bringing his buddies. He yeah. wants to get up here, have a good time with us. Awesome. That's we chatted nice. right before Christmas. And uh, we're going to make this happen, Chris. Mm-hmm. Okay, Adrian had a big surgery, I believe. So let's hear this one. Yeah, so my big one was finally after being postponed last September, getting his cochlear implant yesterday. Looking forward to getting my hearing back in my left ear after a long time of being mostly deaf. Awesome. Oh, that's super cool, dude. Ryan, he got back on <laughs> He's Facebook. Back on Facebook. <laughs> 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 oh, that's awesome. You did it. Scott said he smashed his truck heading out to take my oldest son fishing on Sunday. The win, however, was that everyone was fine, and the worst part for him was that he couldn't bring a fish home for his sister. Uh, well, I'm glad to hear you're okay. Well, look at uh, there. That's there my mom, folks. Mama. So, her. yeah, and so what does she do for us? Yeah, so, I mean, this is just like. I mean, we can. She is like a second mom to me and to all the boys at FFBR. For all, all of us that live out of town, she just houses us all summer. We get to literally hang out, have great laughs, get to eat dinners together. Yeah. Literally feels like home. Um, yeah. So I super appreciate that. Miss you guys, and yeah, hope you're well. So yeah, we get to stay at her house all summer in Calgary when we're guiding. Uh, it's like a trout hotel there. People <laughs> coming and going, and. Uh, I'm super grateful for my mom and the fact that she's always just been a open house to any of my friends. Um, no judgment whatsoever. It's super cool. I hope everybody in here has a mom like my mom. Yeah. Mr. Hillbilly, Andy, says, My win is after a super cold work week. I get to come home every night to great family. My boy Eli is always hanging out and working with me in the shop every night. Uh, love family and love all you people in Tino. Uh, we love you too, man. Super happy to have you with us. Awesome, folks. Well, it's kind of where uh, the rubber hits the road. Hmm. It's kind of that kind of means it's beginning or it's ending. Whatever oh. it means, we're ending. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Moms this are the is best. Gonna be a true statement from Cam. We'll take them for granted. Absolutely. Moms are amazing, and my mom is more amazing <laughs> <laughs> The most amazing guest. All right, folks, uh, that's kind of it for episode three. We went a little overtime, but who's checking? That's a good point. Uh, it's kind of what happens here. We tie a couple flies. We we have some fun. We play some games. We give away prizes, and we sh- send your bacon in. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, most importantly, we just get to connect with you guys because that's what it's all about. It's it. I I hate hitting this goodbye screen here because it's like, oh my goodness, we've got seven more days until I get to see all you guys. So if that's the way you guys feel, reach out to us. If you need to talk, reach literally reach out. Like the comment earlier that said, this is actually a family. That's actually the truth. Us, the people in the comments, people donating stuff for people's birth, kids' birthdays, like uh, people have reached out and purchased kits for us to give to other people. They don't want any kind of mention or whatever. Um, this actually is a family, and you, all you people, are a part of it. And we're grateful for each and every one of you, whether you jump in and tie with us hang out with us laugh with us 
whether you purchase the kit, help to keep show going, whatever you want to do, uh, we're grateful for all of you. And uh, yeah. until next time, I, I need to have like until a going time. out, <laughs> like so a this better. This is the hardest part, though. How do you go out? A better, better piece and out. Better way of saying goodbye. See you later. Not goodbye. Bye. Well, what did that was on Yellowstone? I know, I'm trying to think of what it was now. He Blank. said, "We say Cow, cowboys." Well, we guess see what? In the dirt. Guess what? You only say goodbye when you're six feet in the dirt. Yeah. So we won't say goodbye. We'll say see you next week. You next hey, week. dress up like Yellowstone. You guys, you better not Don't just leave, leave me and Beth to dress up <laughs> like that. <laughs> I don't know. Love you guys. Love you. We'll see you next week. <laughs>